of 16 billion naira was paid in on the same day in two accounts. And after the withdrawal of that money, that nothing else happened in that account till today. And my question is, whereas there is need for further forensic examination, which they recommended to make a finding on 16.25 billion, because they don't know the purpose, the reason for the withdrawal. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, what I want to know was the, speak, was the committee able to ask please honorable colleagues can I be listening to his silence as by the rules of the house Mr. Chairman what I'm asking please honorable members please please honorable members please Please, honorable members, let's listen in silence. We are in our normal proceedings. We are not yet in the benedictory session. Please. Please, honorable members, take your seats. Please. Uh, are we expected to make noise when in the benedictory session? No, sir. I'm, I can cheaply whip the house, sir. As leader of the house, I can cheaply step into it. The most important should be silent. Please, honorable members, please. Honorable Alims, honorable Alims, please take your seat. Jagaba, take your seat, please. Take your seat with your red cap. Igwe. You may continue, sir. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for the rescue. Uh, Mr. Chairman, what I wanted to find out was the committee able to request that they lift the veil for us to know the ownership and the operators of that account. Thank you very much. Magbila. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Yes, the committee obtained details of the ownership of those companies from the CAC, and that record has been submitted to the House. They are not obvious individuals that are known you know, popularly by all, but there still seems to be a lot to be answered about why that amount of money was paid. But yes, we have obtained details of the ownership, and it's at the, um, uh, it's available for the house. Part of your findings stated, did you state in your findings? Is this stated in your findings? Contained okay, 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 in the, in the findings, in the findings. Um, no, not, but it is part of the submission, the annexures that was referred to, yes. Pardon? It is part of the annexures that was referred to, that was attached no, to the report. No, I think it's supposed, you are supposed to unveil this one, since you are finding it necessary to recommend investigation to it. You should have stated the owners of the account and then those behind it. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, on of your Luke is my name. I hold the mandate of the people of 18 and 3 Bumsurubi on federal constituency of Akwa Ibom State. Mr. Chairman, when you look at the recommendations of this report, there is a clear point out to the fact that this is inconclusive. And so we cannot approbate and reprobate at the same time. And so the right thing for us to do at this moment is that since there has been some part of recommendation that the 10 National Assembly should undertake certain investigation, may we please subject this report to the actions and legislative actions of the 10th National Assembly, and that is what I will propose, sir. Thank you. Oludodo. Thank you, Chairman. Oli colleagues, I remain Oludodo Kuga Bidiani, Sakafu, for the people of Ilori East, Ilori Sabera constituency. I'm from Kwara State, State of Amini. Mr. Chairman, I rise to second the position by Oribu Luk. I so second. I so second. Is it a motion? <laughs> Those in favor yeah, of the, 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 the yeah, motion moved by I'm Luke and then seconded by Odolbo the to say aye. 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 Thank you. So recommendation three as amended. Carried? Thank you. Leader. 
Move for the House to revise to plan to report progress. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, thank you, right, honorable chairman. Honorable members, I rise to move that this honorable house do rebut to plenary to report progress. Mr. Chairman, honorable members, I so respectively move. To report Mr. Progress. Mr. Chair and my colleagues, Comrade Peter Ohio Zodia Patasi, MNI. I represent the great people of Bakoko Edu Federal constituency. Mr. Chair, I second the motion as ably moved by the leader of the House. I so second. The very colleagues, those in favor of the motion say aye. Against say nay. The answer of the House is here, but we'll to plan to put progress. Honorable colleagues, the House in the Committee of the Whole consider the report of the Committee on Capital Market and Institutions on the need to investigate the rising value of unclaimed dividends, unremitted withholding tax on dividend and unremitted unattended effects on the nation's economy and approve that the report is inconclusive and therefore the 10th National Assembly should continue to investigation. The House also in a committee of the whole considered report of the ad hoc committee to investigate the alleged loss of 2.4 billion in revenue from the, from the illegal sale of 48 million barrels of crude oil in 2015, including crude oil exports from 2014 to date, and approved all the recommendations of the report with, amended, with amendment to recommendation three under whistleblower revelations. Leader, please move for adoption of the uh, Leader of the House. Leader of the House, please move for adoption. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, right Honorable Femi Bajabia Mila, the Sadoki of Yauri. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, I rise to move that this House adopt the report of the Committee of the Whole. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I so respectfully move. Deputy Leader. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, Comrade Peter Ohiozi Jia Patterson, MNI, I represent the great people of Akokwe do Federal constituency. Mr. Speaker, I second the motion ably moved by the leader of the house, I so second. Uh, those in favor, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. 
Yeah, I have it. Honorable Chinda, please approach the chair. Chinda, I think we'll go back very quickly to your report. What does your report say? Because we are adjourning Senedai. You had a report to submit. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, my name is Kingsley Chinda. I represent Obi Abo Federal constituency I'm an Ipori man from River State. Mr. Speaker, I'm very grateful for yielding the floor to me. Mr. Speaker, we seek for your leave to lay on the table this report that was referred to us, an ad hoc committee on the need to investigate the diversion of 20 billion by staff of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation. Mr. Speaker, as a result of time constraint, we are unable to conclude with this and we have made one single recommendation that due to the importance of this issue slated down for investigation, that the next assembly, that is the 10th assembly, under order 12 of our rules, should be allowed to carry out further investigation on this matter, I seek your leave to lay this report, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> so, Honorable, uh, Honorable Maki. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues. I'm Abu Bakar Maki. I'm from Jigawa State. I represent Malamudur Kaugama Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I rise to second the motion heavily moved by one of our leaders. Thank you, as well, Mr. Speaker. So, due to inconclusiveness of the report, the report is uh, the report is um, suspended till the 10th Assembly. Those in favour, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Ayes have it. Leader of the House, Leader of the House, please invite our guest, the, the former Honorable Speaker, uh, Honorable colleagues. We are about to invite the former, some former speakers and clerks of the House into the chambers so that we can begin our valedictory session. Uh, leader of the House, please move that the former speakers, former leaders, and uh, former clerks of the house be invited into the chambers. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, my respected colleagues, I remain Honorable Alhassan Ado Dogua, 
Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I represent the good people of Tudungwada, Dogwa Federal Constituency. Honorable members, I am from Kano State. And by God's grace, Mr. Speaker, I am winding down today as the outgoing leader of the Ninth House of Representatives by Allah's grace. On this note, Mr. Speaker, as you have rightly directed, may I formally move that this House do admit into this honorable chamber, pursuant to order 20, 21, rule 8, sub 1, 4, and sub 1, 4, and, and 8 of the standing orders of the House to admit into the chamber former presiding officers, leadership, and clerks of House of Representatives for the purpose of this very important valedictory session for the Ninth House of Representatives. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I so respectfully move. Thank you. Honorable well, colleagues, we are about to invite our past leaders and speakers and clerks into the chambers. Please let us, um, let us in deference to them, um, let there be tranquility in the house so that they will know that the house they, the house they left or the house they are about to enter into is even better than the house they left behind. Please let us have some tranquility, some peace, some quiet in deference to our past leaders. Uh, Minority Leader, please second. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I remain Honorable the Godwin Del Melu, and I represent the good people of Anocho Shumbi Federal Constituency. I'm from Delta State. I rise to second the motion moved by the House Leader, Honorable Adodogua. I so second. Please let every member be seated in their seats quietly, please, as we usher in our past speakers and leaders and clerks. Please let every member be seated in their seat quietly. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those against me say nay. Ayes have it. Sergeant Adams, please, go ahead. Sergeant Adams. Eh? Denise and Jay? Sergeant Adams and leader. Welcome to the live.
College of Session for the Ninth House of Representatives. Please have a seat. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Welcome to the live coverage of uh, 
House of Reps Valedictory Session. It's the live valedictory session of the ninth House of Representatives. It marks the end of the ninth assembly. Just before now, the House of Representatives leader, the leader of the ninth house, had uh, moved the motion to admit presiding, a former presiding officers, former leadership and clerks to the session. It's going to be a straightforward session that will see a speech by the speaker. Goodwill messages by principal officers, contributions by members, goodwill messages by former presiding officers, as well as former clerks to the National Assembly. And to wrap it up, a presentation of certificates will be done by the Speaker for lawmakers in the Ninth House of Representatives. It's been an interesting ride for these lawmakers. Uh, some of them here wish they could come back, but they will not be returning because of the outcome of the elections. At least 67% of them will not be returning. One of the former speakers in attendance is Gali Umar Naba. He has been very loyal to the House of Representatives. He was there uh, at the uh, last valedictory session of the 8th House of Representatives as well. He's here with his wife. There are two chambers uh, dedicated to this. This is a makeshift chamber. The House of Representatives is holding this valedictory session for the first time in this chamber. The Speaker of the Ninth House of Representatives. Mr. Speaker, allow me also to recognize your traditional title as the Sadoki of Yaudi a member of the Council of Yauri Ancient Emirate and a member of the Kingmaker's Council of that great kingdom, Right Honorable Femi Bajabia Miller. May I also recognize the presence of our former presiding and principal officers of this great house, some of our former clerks that are here on ground, my respected colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I remain Honorable Alhassan Ado Dogua. Mr. Speaker, I am representing Dogua Tudungwada Federal Constituency of Kano State. Mr. Speaker, in the circumstances, I rise as the outgoing leader of the great Ninth House of Representatives. And based on your directives at this moment, Mr. Speaker, I rise on this epoch making session to move that this Honorable House do resolve to valedictory session for the purpose of this important engagement. Mr. Speaker, we have the presiding of, former presiding officers on ground seated. We have former members of body of principal officers of this great chamber seated. Some members of the management staff, former and serving also seated to rejoice with us on this very important and auspicious day. Mr. Speaker, with pride on behalf of my members, I therefore move that this house resolves to valedictory session for the purpose of today's business. Right honorable members, I so respectfully move. Thank you, leader. Uh, minority leader, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again, I also remain Honorable Di Godwin Elumbelu, the outgoing minority leader. I rise representing our new church Milifera constituency. I'm proudly from Delta State. I rise to second the motion moved by the House leader, my colleague, I so second. Thank you. Those in support that we commence our validity session, please say aye. aye. Those against me say nay. Ayes have it. 
Um, I think we have on the calendar here opening prayers by Edem and the Muslim one by Al Kali. Honorable Edem. Almighty God, we appreciate you for what you have done for us today, for bringing all of us safely to these chambers today. We thank you for bringing the former presiding officers of these chambers and other staff that have worked here for this country. Lord, we appreciate you for life. We started this journey in 2019, four years ago, and your word says that everything that has the beginning must have an end. Today, we will mark the end of 2019 to 2023 um, parliamentary year. And we thank you because you have kept all of us alive. Even those that have departed, Lord, we pray that you give them rest in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray as we commence the proceedings today, we pray for wisdom, for knowledge, for direction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray that you take control of this session from the beginning to the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Honorable al please, the Muslim prayer. Salla ala Nabi al-Kareem. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad kama salli ala Rahim wa barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim fi al-alamin innaka hamidun bajid. Allahumma inna nasaluka al-tuqa wa al-gina wa al-afafa wa al-maqfi'a. Allahumma inna nasaluka al-afu wa al-afiyata fi al-din wa al-dunya ya Rabb al-alamin. Allahumma inna nasaluka al-sa'adata ya Rabbana wa ya Mawlana wa ya Ilahana wa ya Rabb al-alamin. اللهم كفنا يا ربنا كيد العداء وكف عنا يا ربنا غلب الغالبين وكف عنا يا ربنا عدوان العادين وكف عنا يا ربنا شر الأشرار وكف عنا يا ربنا حسد الحاسدين وكف عنا يا ربنا مكر الماكرين وكف عنا يا ربنا شر الدنيا والآخرة وتوفنا وأنت راض أن يا كريم اللهم لا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا عسيرا إلا يسرته ولا سائلا إلا أعطيته ولا حادة من حوائجنا الدنيا والآخرة هي لك رضا ولنا فيها صلاح يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل بلادنا نيجيريا آمنة مطمئنة وسائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم اجعل بلادنا نيجيريا آمنة مطمئنة وسائر أوطان الدنيا يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك بأننا نشهد أنك أنت الله الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد اللهم اجعل دعاءنا هذا كن فيكون اللهم اجعل دعاءنا هذا كن فيكون اللهم اجعل دعاءنا هذا كن فيكون يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعل دعاءنا كلمه البصر او هو اقرب يا نعم المولى ويا نعم النصير اللهم انا نسالك باننا نشهد انك خالقنا ورازقنا والهنا ومولانا يا رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقدوتنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Thank you The next item here um... Mr. Speaker, with your leave that we appoint Honorable Al-Ghali as the chief imam for the remaining life of this assembly for the, for the many minutes we have for this Leader. ninth House of Representatives. Leader, <laughs> you, know, you know it's very difficult sometimes to get members' attention. Let's, not, let's try and keep the attention the way <laughs> it is. <laughs> the next item we have is the National Anthem.
Honorable colleagues, let me very quickly use this opportunity to welcome our former presiding officers, former leader of the House, former clerks, and officers of the National Assembly who have come in here today to felicitate with us and be a part of this valedictory session. Honorable colleagues and fellow Nigerians, I thank God Almighty by whose grace and mercy we have gathered here once more in the people's house to do our duty even as our time in the Ninth House of Representatives comes to an end. Honorable colleagues, this will be the last time I address you from this dais as the Speaker of the Ninth House of Representatives. It has been the honor of my life to serve our beloved country from this honorable house. I am profoundly grateful to the people of Surulere One Federal Constituency for allowing me to represent them for the last 20 years. I am grateful to you. I am grateful to you, my dear colleagues, for the honor and privilege of serving as speaker of the Ninth House of Representatives for the last four years. All glory belongs to the Almighty God, who ordains our destinies and guides our path. In the years since I first stepped into the hallowed chamber, the House of Representatives has changed profoundly, just as our country has changed as well. Yet in all that time, I have not witnessed change on a scale and with such speed as has been the case in the last four years. We have lived through a global pandemic that nobody anywhere saw coming. We have governed at a time of global crisis and relentless transformations to the global economy. We have seen our nation's politics come of age with a new generation of young people determined to have a seat at the table and prepared to fight for it, whatever the cost. Just in the last few days, we have seen the end of a subsidy regime that has distorted the energy market in our country for over 30 years. When change happens at this scale and with such an unrelenting pace, it creates challenges and opportunities almost in equal measure. Over the last four years, this House of Representatives has worked to ensure that our country can overcome those challenges and take advantage of the moment to achieve economic, social, and political transformations that benefit all of the Nigerian people. We elevated the debates in the House of Representatives and made this chamber the arena for informed exchange about Nigeria's future and the welfare of our nation's people. We have left our mark in every sector of our national life and possibly, positively impacted people's lives across our country. We introduced discipline into the appropriations process by implementing a January to December budget cycle that ended the policy instability and economic uncertainty of the previous irregular budget cycles. We reformed the oversight process to ensure greater collaboration between the arms of government. We made it easier for citizens to access details of budget expenditures so that they too can be part of the process of ensuring accountability in the administration of public funds. We did not yield our constitutional obligation to ensure faithful compliance with the letter and spirit of the Appropriation Act by the ministries, departments, and agencies of government. While the strategic importance of the oil and gas sector to Nigeria's socioeconomic well-being has long been apparent, successive administrations failed to put in place a functional statutory regime to allow that sector to function optimally. We ended that legacy of lethargy with the passage of the Petroleum Industry Act, with the Deep Offshore and Inland Basic Production Sharing Contracts Act. We went even further to put the sector on the right footing. Now, these statutory reforms rightfully ought to have happened a long time ago. Now, we must ensure that the reforms contained in these acts are dutifully implemented as part of a broader energy policy suited to the realities of technological advancements and the evolving demands of the global energy market. 
We passed the Police Act to change the nature of relations between the police and citizens in our country and to ensure that pol police reforms or police officers who fall short of their responsibilities can be quickly held accountable. The Act expressly prohibits police officers from arresting citizens for civil wrongs, imposes an obligation on the police to inform citizens of their rights at the point of arrest, and mandates the police to ensure that persons arrested have access to their families and legal representation. In addition, the Act established the Police Complaints Units as a statutory organ accessible to the public to report police misconduct and empower and empowered to initiate action when such reports are received. These reforms did not end police misbehavior in our country. Soon enough, there was a national reckoning. We responded by working with the Nigerian Bar Association to establish a new framework of accountability to hold erring members of the police force to account for their conduct in performance of their duties and compel the Nigerian police to take responsibility for the failures of training and discipline that leads to such wrongful act. And we approached the sum, we approved rather, the sum of 500 million naira through the National Human Rights Commission to compensate victims of police brutality nationwide. I sincerely hope that the work of police reform will continue in the House of Representatives until we achieve a system of policing that needs or meets our nation's uh, needs and reflects the best of us. When in March 2020, the COVID-19 virus entered our shores, we became bound with the rest of the world in experiencing a tragic disruption to our economic, political, and social lives, unlike anything we have ever witnessed. This House of Representatives responded by taking active measures to protect the Nigerian people, including those who work here in the National Assembly. We passed the Emergency Economic Stimulus Bill to grant companies a rebate on companies' income tax, suspend import duties on, med on medicines, medical equipment, personnel protective equipment, and other essential medical materials, and deferred mortgage obligations to residential mortgages by contributors to the National Housing Fund. We also passed the Emergency Relief and Assistance Bill to provide a limited salary guarantee for low-income permanent employees of companies registered and operating in Nigeria. Relieve legal consumers of electricity in Nigeria of the burden of electricity charges for a limited period and suspend for a fixed period the implementation of the value-added tax provisions of the Finance Act 2020. Whilst this decision did not pass in the Senate and never became law, they provided the framework for the federal government's policy response to the pandemic as the policy ideas contained therein were adopted and variously implemented through executive orders and subsequent legislations. Honorable colleagues, we worked to establish under emergency conditions a fully functioning care facility in the federal capital territory under the management of the National Center for Disease Control, NCDC. We intervened to prevent potentially devastating strike action by doctors and ensure that medical professionals at the fore of our response to the pandemic were remunerated correctly and provided the allowances due to them. We reviewed the statutory framework for managing infectious disease outbreaks and proposed the Infectious Disease Bill to reform an area of our laws that hadn't been examined for a century. In an act of service, for which I remain proud and thankful, Members of this house volunteered their salaries to the COVID relief fund to support the needs of the most vulnerable in our society. <laughs> the legislative legacy of the Ninth House of Representatives includes the Companies and Allied Matters Act and the Nigerian Startup Act, two critical legislations aimed at changing the way we do business in Nigeria by streamlining regulations, reducing red tape, and setting the conditions for the private sector to innovate, thrive, and grow. Our legacy also includes the comprehensive electoral reforms in the Electoral Act that have changed forever for good the way we conduct elections in Nigeria. <laughs> While we recognize the need to continue to work to improve election management in Nigeria, we must acknowledge the vast improvements that have happened since the return of, the dem of democracy. And we take pride in our contribution to those improvements over the last four years. 
through the constitutional review process, the House of Representatives sought to restructure our government to make it more effective, reorganize um, and our politics to make it more inclusive, and enshrine efficient mechanisms for holding the institutions of state to account and put an end to the debilitating conflicts that even now continue to tear our nation apart. For this, I want to particularly thank the Deputy Speaker of the House for, for spearheading and chairing the Committee on Constitutional Review. We made an audacious attempt to create a constitution that addresses once and for all the fundamental issues that distract from nation building. The constitutional amendments we, we enacted devolved power and responsibilities over critical areas of our national life in an effort to spur innovation and healthy competition at subnational level. By our joint effort, we achieved financial independence for state houses of assembly and state judiciary, granting greater autonomy to these arms of government in line with democratic best practice. To succeed in our shared ambition of building a prosperous and peaceful country, we must do everything within our power to ensure that our daughters and those yet to be born can grow up in a more open, more equal society than their mothers did. <laughs> Unfortunately, we did not succeed in removing some of the constitutional barriers that have long stood in the way of women's full and unheeded participation in the politics, governance, and economy of our nation. This issue must continue to be at the fore of our national conversations. I hope the 10th Assembly will take up the mantle and do better than we did. Beyond legislative interventions, the Ninth House of Representatives will be remembered for our efforts to change how we do the business of Parliament, most notably for introducing in information technology tools through the e-Parliament project and establish the National Assembly Library Trust Fund. The National Assembly Library Trust Fund will ensure that the National Assembly is operationally suited to meet the needs of the Nigerian people by providing modern library and research infrastructure, training and capacity development for legislators and aides, and operating as a resource center for the legislature and all who have any interest in legislative endeavors. This ninth house will, with unwavering courage and determination, defend the rights and dignity of the Nigerian people abroad from every attempt to dehumanize and victimize our people. Our interventions in, on behalf of Nigerians in China during the pandemic put an end to the recurrent incidents of abuse, just as our efforts on behalf of the Nigerians in South Africa and Ghana caused the governments of those nations to, stop up, to, stop, to step up action to protect the lives and property of our citizens in those countries. From Ghana to South Africa, from China to the United States of America, we made it clear that this parliament will defend the rights of our citizens to conduct their legitimate business without fear of molestation, and that the well-being of Nigerians remains our business, whether home or abroad. This model of parliamentary diplomacy has become a legitimate tool for back-channel interventions to resolve conflicts involving our citizens around the world. It is an approach that ought to be sustained and improved. We convened a summit on national security to examine our national security and defense infrastructure and identify critical areas of improvement. I hope that work, that I hope that work to ensure our borders are secure, our people are safe, will continue in the next assembly and throughout government. Through the conference of speakers and heads of African parliaments, we have initiated a new and promising framework for interparliamentary cooperation across the country, continent to address our shared challenges and build better networks for collaboration, progress, and prosperity. This effort should continue in the best interest of our country and continent. Honorable colleagues, despite the considerable investments we have made to improve our public infrastructure and the numerous reforms we have, en we have enacted to change how we administer the government, our country faces many significant challenges. These challenges have caused many of our fellow citizens to wonder if the promise of democracy will ever become real in their lives. To many of our young people, they have lost faith entirely and are choosing in droves to seek their fortunes and their futures in other lands. 
we are losing some of our best and brightest. And if we don't act now, the consequences of this loss will shortly and painfully become evident. How do we ensure a healthy, vigorous, growing economy that provides opportunities for all who work hard to succeed through their labor and ingenuity? How do we protect our people from the marauders and the insurgents, the petty criminals and assorted villains who wish to harm them, whether for profit or in service of other agendas? How do we restore faith in our young people so that so many of them no longer feel like the, the only way out is for them to achieve their aspirations is to chase their fortunes in far away, often hostile lands. These are the critical questions all of us in government must answer or risk the unforgiving judgment of history. With each new day, we have an opportunity to make the hard choices and take the necessary actions to guarantee our nation's future. With each new day, we have less time to act and a more outstanding obligation to act quickly. As you are all aware, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Ashwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu GCFR, has nominated me to continue serving the people of Nigeria. <laughs> to continue serving the people of Nigeria as Chief of Staff in the Presidency. I am humbled by this new call to duty, and I am grateful to all of you who have reached out to me. I have long believed that the ultimate end of, a political, of all political and governance efforts must be to achieve measurable improvements in the lives of people of whose be, on whose behalf we hold office. This fundamental belief in the responsibility of government to be a force for good has been my guiding light. It will continue to be so in my new endeavors. I humbly ask for your prayers and support in this new chapter. I assure you that in this new role, I will work to ensure a cordial and productive relationship between the executive and legislative arms of government, whilst respecting the independence and prerogatives of the legislature. <laughs> For everything, there is a time and a season. And we are obliged and obligated each season to do the most and the best we can in the time we have. This is a good rule for politics and for life itself. The ninth House of Representatives is ending and the tenth will shortly be convened. All of us, those whose time in office is ending and those for whom duty continues will face the judgment of history. I urge you to keep this in mind and let your actions be guided by the desire to ensure that you are not found wanting by man or God in the final judgment. As a member and speaker of this honorable house, I have traveled the length of this country and I have been amazed by the talent and capacity, dogged determination and resilience of the Nigerian people. The abundance of these qualities among our people assures me that if government lives up to its responsibilities, our people are ready to do the rest. So we must live up to our responsibilities. There is no other option. I want to express my sincere appreciation to the civil servants and aides who have toiled tirelessly with me during my time here. I thank you all most sincerely for your service. I want you to know that the roles you play in keeping this institution running are crucial to achieving the kind of country we all desire. I urge you to please take pride in performing those roles credibly at all times. Reach for excellence in all you do and resist the cynicism and pessimism that encourages ladies' laziness and ineptitude. I also wish to thank our compatriots in the media for their dedicated efforts in ensuring that the exercise of state and economic power is fair and proper and in service of the greater good. A lot of the work we do in the legislature would not be possible without the support and partnerships of civil society organizations and development partners. I want to especially thank the Policy and Legal Advocacy Center, the Nigerian Bar Association, Conrad Edenor, Steve Tong, and several others who have prov proven worthy partners in progress. For the better part of my adult life, 
I have traversed the halls of this complex, legislated from the chamber of this hallowed house, and built relationships with people from across the country, colleagues past and present. I have met and established genuine bonds of brotherhood with some of the most amazing human beings in these chambers, and together we have shared experiences that strengthen those bonds. As I transition into my new role, a role unlike the one I have had for these many years, I ask for your support and best wishes as we continue to work together to advance the course and fulfill the policy, promise of Nigeria. I will miss all of you, and I will miss this house. I want you to rest assured that wherever the road takes me, I will carry you all in my heart, fondly because fondly because you have enriched my life in ways words alone cannot fully express. Nigeria is an unfinished story, a long tale of promise and peril, and our final chapters have not been written yet. Some persist in believing that this grand nation is a victim of history, that our destiny has already long been written, and that we cannot escape from it. I do not subscribe to this view. In fact, I reject it entirely. Indeed, the world today is being remade by profound and powerful forces, and it may seem our destiny to longer, no longer lies within our control. But we are a proud and resilient people with a limitless capacity for excellence. All that we hope to be, we can. All that we desire is within reach. Our greatest successes as a nation will come when we work together across party lines without considering differences of tribe and, and tongue, religion and creed towards the shared goals of our nationhood, peace and prosperity, equity and justice for all. As we bring this ninth House of Representatives to a, to a close, I am proud to say that by our joint effort in nation building, we have ensured that the course of Nigeria will long endure and the dreams of our nation's uh, founding fathers will not die. We came, we saw, and while there is much yet to conquer, we have, done, we have done our duty to God and country. I came to this honorable house 20 years ago, filled with hope for our nation's future. I leave this office today with hope unbroken, and my enthusiasm to serve remains undiminished. I am more confident that our best days are ahead and that we can build a future where our nation is a beacon of excellence, a refuge, and a place for pride for all who salute our flag and swear allegiance to our constitution. This is a future worth fighting for. This is the future I will never stop fighting for. I thank you. Goodbye. God bless you. And God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Honorable colleagues, we'll now move on to goodwill messages with the kind permission and the wisdom preferred by these principal officers. They have asked that members should speak first before the principal officers round up. Um, this is by the leave of the principal officers. So I will start with um, Honorable Julius Hinoberg. Yeah, every member, every member has two minutes. Please, thank you. Hmm? 
All right. Uh, well, you are still the speaker, Mr. Speaker. With due respect to the former principal officers and leaders, distinguished colleagues, uh, Mr. Speaker, let me thank you very much for your wonderful address. I believe it has covered virtually every aspect of the hopes, the dreams of our people, and the contradictions and challenges they continue to face. Uh, we want to thank you for the continued hope and for the hope renewed that you have expressed. Uh, for me, this has been a wonderful opportunity and the kind of friends I have made here I have never met such wonderful persons before. Uh, these are relationships that will last me forever. For you, uh, Mr. Speaker, all I can say is that let God continue to remain with you, to guide you, and continue to provision for you as you face new challenges. Give thanks to God that you have the health coupled with your vast experience, exposure, and wisdom to continue to provide for Nigerians. You have led us well. You have led us perfectly. You have led us without blemish. You have been a role model, and you have shown to Nigerians that you can manage a diverse group of people from conflicting perspectives without <laughs> contradiction and conflicts. It means clearly that you have only laid the foundation for your future. And I hope that that blessing that is going with you will apply to the rest of us in this house. Mr. Speaker, in your new role, your challenges will be more than what you face here. Because those contradictions, those pains, those broken dreams that you spoke about are still there. In many cases, they are even worse. So we plead with you not to abandon the spirit of collegiality, the spirit of hope, the spirit of continuously staying the course of achievement and excellence, the spirit of vision, of commitment, of believing that a country requires the kind of leaders that would have that ability to have a sense of nation and a sense of mission. Without that, we are lost people. So we thank you for the leadership you provided. Let me end by pleading with you, sir, as you go up to the villa, that basic education, that through you, I had the opportunity to chair that committee, is still in big trouble in Nigeria. Education is still broken. When basic education is broken, there is no way secondary education will not be broken. And there is no way the tertiary education will not suffer the same fate. Please do all you can for our children, for our future, for our communities. Five minutes outside any state capital is rocks. Dilapidated buildings, schools without teachers, primary schools without water, no play field, no toilets in this country in 2023, it's an embarrassment. With you there, with the new president, I know that we will see a change. We count on you, don't fail us. God continue to bless you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Honorable Luke, one of you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Luke, Mr. Luke, Mr. Speaker. I hold the mandate of the people of Etinan, Mr. Federal Constituency of Akwa Ibom State, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I will first start by thanking God Almighty that has been our guide, our help in the last four years, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, our last four years, four years ago, we gathered in these hallowed chambers, Mr. Speaker, as strangers. Mr. Speaker, the journey of four years has led us to making friends, brothers, and sisters in these other chambers, a relationship that will last us a lifetime, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to use opportunity to, to thank the people of my federal constituency.
for giving me the mandate to be their voice in these hallowed chambers. Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the leadership of this National Assembly, starting from you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate you, Mr. Speaker, because you gave the opportunity for new members, first-timers, to express themselves, to bring the yearnings and aspirations of their people to the front burner of national discourse. Mr. Speaker, you were patient enough most times to relax the rules of the House, to extend the numbers of matters of urgent national importance because you needed to give new members a voice in this floor. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you were patient enough to allow us to make our mistakes, and then you were gentle in correcting those mistakes without pointing to our faces the mistakes we have made. Mr. Speaker, we appreciate you for that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we appreciate the entire leadership for the cordial relationship led by the Deputy Speaker, the leader, the whip, the chief whip, the minority leader for cooperating with you for us to have the kind of house we've had today. Mr. Speaker, I will not fail to thank the clerk and the management staff, the entire staff, and the other committee clerks, the members of the press, for the support and in amplifying the little work we do in these hallowed chambers. Mr. Speaker, back to you again. Mr. Speaker, you took the stands on the side of Nigerians, even while those stands most times were not in consonant with their party. Mr. Speaker, that shows a man who keeps the country above his party. That shows how patriotic you are. One clear example, Mr. Speaker. During the NSAS protest, he did not sit down well with the executive. But you took a stand, Mr. Speaker, and said you will not sign off on the budget of that year until sums are included in the budget for the payment of victims of police brutality. I came to you, Mr. Speaker. I said, I'm afraid of, I'm af I have fear for that stand you've taken because it does not sit well. You said something. You said, I will look. No matter what it would cost me, I would always be on the side of Nigerians. I believe in Nigeria, and I want Nigeria to be a better place. And for you to be a better supporter of your power, I mean, party in power, is for you to tell truth to your party in power. You have done that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you gave opportunity to the opposition to say, to have their say when the majority will have their way. Mr. Speaker, the only opportunity you did not give is that when members defected from their seats and went to the other party, Mr. Speaker, that is the only opportunity. That's on a lighter note, sir. But you know, sir, you know, you know, sir, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you. Mr. Speaker, some first timers. Honorable oh. Luke, you are two minutes is off. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I hope the opposition is protected again today, just like you've been protecting us. So, Mr. Speaker, before I close, sir, you gave me a responsibility through the lead and the entire leadership as the Chairman House of Representatives Committee on Judiciary. I want to thank all the members of my committee for the work we've been able to do. But, Mr. Speaker, in your new role, we have not been able to reach an Eldorado. Mr. Speaker, the judicial officers of this country are still wallowing in their poor working and living condition, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the last salary review for the judicial officers in this country was about 14 years ago. And every, every effort to increase the salaries of judges, justices, and judicial officers has ended in, in futility. So, Mr. Speaker, on this last note, I want to urge you, sir, to take the issue of judiciary. Let me stand here and thank my mother for giving birth to me, and thank my wife for being a good support system, and thank my siblings and my supporters, and thank my former governor, Governor Roger Manuel. And finally, the party on which I am on their platform, the People's Democratic Party. Proudly a People's Democratic Party man, I thank the party for giving me that platform. Thank you, and God bless you, sir. Honorable J.J. Jimo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My name is Jim Abdurrahim Holajide. I represent Lagos Mainland Federal Constituency, Lagos State. Mr. Speaker, I give thanks to Almighty God the ruler of heaven and the heart, who has given me the opportunity 
the last 24 years in Lagos mainland to have represented them in various positions. I appreciate the President, Bolaha Metinumbu, the Tutor General of Nigeria Politics, for him to have considered me fit to come here again to represent him and Lagos State and Nigeria as a whole. Mr. Speaker, Quran 14, verse 7 is very clear. If I'm allowed, Lain Zakari to Lazida Naku, or Lain Kabare to In Azabula said you. I, Allah, if I'm grateful to you and I help you, you must be thankful to me. I thank Almighty God for that opportunity. I thank Almighty God for creating me. I thank Almighty God for the opportunity he has given to me. An American cartoonist, political cartoonist, said, it is not, don't cry when it is over. Ensure you smile when it has happened. Today it has happened. We started with excitement, without arm twisting. We started with joy, with chorus of Baja Wase, Baja Wase, Wase Baja. Today we are ending it. Today we are done. Today we are going. Today we cannot come back here again, not for anything. We have lost so many number of people. And if I'm permitted, I will reach them, sir. Mr. Speaker, we have lost so many number of our colleagues, starting from Ekwayon Basi, from Akwaibon, Jude Eden, Edo, Fagot Gawu Jigawa, Killer Yuguda Asad from Jigawa again, Osi Prestige from Abia, Murtala Aruna from Plateau, Amalafe Adibayo from Mundo. What about me? I have not gone. Those people have gone. What about our others? They have not gone. They are still alive. If you are alive, there are certain things you must do. Today, you must give them that one minute silence which is very important, which is very necessary. The Prophet <laughs> said, the Prophet said, and I want to quote, there's a bunch of flesh in our body. If it's sand, your body is sand. If it remains on sand, your body remains what? On sand. What is that body of flesh? Our hearts. It's because we are still alive, we are discussing. It's because we are still alive, we are participating. It's because we are still alive, we are seated. If you are no more alive, that's the head. If it is the head, what will be the next thing? I want us to consider certain things, that we are good. I want us to know that today's submission cannot never be the end in our life. If we are still alive, we continue to contribute. For those of you that are coming back for the 10th Assembly, that's the challenges. Please ensure that challenges is addressed equally. But I thank God I have been involved. So many things you have mentioned, constitutional amendment, karma, Electoral Act, I was represented. I was here representing my people. I came legislating for my people. I was here involving over an oversight function. That is the opportunity you are giving to me. Mr. Speaker, I thank God for you. I appreciate you. We share the same boundary. Lagos, Mela, and Sul Liri. That is proper Lagos. All others are Western Lagos. No, I said that. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. So, thank you very much. It, I, I, Mr. 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 Speaker, Mr. Speaker, when I say, Mr. Speaker, sir, I think I've covered. When I say proper Lagos, I know what I mean. I'm not talking of Lagos states. If you are talking of Lagos states, you are talking of Ikeja, Alimasho. When I say Lagos, proper Lagos, that's Lagos mainland, Lagos island, Suru, Lere, and Co. Therefore, I move motion that we should have one minute silence on those people that we have lost their life. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for that reminder. We will pay respect to our departed colleagues um, um, at, the, at the end of the last speech. Honorable Gagdi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Even though your speech made me almost lose my voice. Mr. Speaker, I'm Yusuf Adamugadi. I represent Panshinkanke Kanan Federal Constituency. 
a unique constituency that I will tell the Ninth Assembly today. Mr. Speaker, Panshin Kanke Kanam comprises three local governments. Muslims are not more than 30% of that constituency. Christians constitute over 70% of Panshin Kanke Kanam Federal constituency, but they have always sent me here as a Muslim, irrespective of religion, to come and represent them. Mr. Speaker, I thank them immensely for this show of love, for using me as a good example for how Nigeria should behave and how our politics should be. Mr. Speaker, I thank God and I thank my parents for making me who I am today. Mr. Speaker, I thank all my colleagues, members of the Ninth House of Representatives. Mr. Speaker, I am particularly thankful to you for providing leadership together with the body of principal officers of the Ninth House of Representatives. Mr. Speaker, we have seen everything but not all. We have done our best, but we leave the rest to God. What I want to say fundamentally is a message of forgiveness. The last speaker has spoken about most of our colleagues that would have been with us here, Mr. Speaker, but God, in his infinite mercy, decided to take them away. We all pray for Jannah to be their final abode. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I want to, on your behalf, and on behalf of the body of principal officers, and all of us here in the Ninth House of Representatives, to plead with us to forgive one another. In one way or the other, in the course of discharge of our own obligation and responsibility, we must have bite our tongues. We must have offended one another. Mr. Speaker. <laughs> 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 I want to say that as human, if you are a human being and you feel you have not forgiven for offended anybody. Honorable colleagues, honorable colleagues, honorable colleagues, honorable colleagues, please, please, please. Mr. Speaker, I am a Muslim. Honorable Deputy Leader, Chief Whip, please Mr. call your Speaker. members to order. Honorable colleagues, please continue. Mr. Speaker, what is right is right, even if nobody wants to hear it. And what is wrong is wrong, even if everybody. Mr. Speaker, I want to say that as humans, we must have offended one another. And on behalf of myself, please, you, silence, Speaker, please. Silence, please. I believe that anybody that we must have wronged, order, 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 please. We find a place in his heart to forgive us. Mr. Speaker, God has given us the enablement to interact with one another. Tomorrow, we are going to meet elsewhere. As you have said in your speech, we remain friends and we will meet in the wider future. My only prayer for you is for you to succeed in your new endeavor. Mr. Speaker, order, order. You are for you to provide leadership your time is off. to the people of this country. It's for you to time provide up. leadership. Time up. To the people of this country. Time up. And God bless you. I wish you well. And I wish you the best, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.
Honorable colleagues, honorable colleagues, honorable colleagues, please. We have our past presiding officers here in chambers with us. Honorable colleagues. Please, we have guests here with us. Our past presiding officers are here with us. Please let us try and remain, let's try and remain quiet. Please, as we round off this valedictory session, please. Honorable, um, his comrade here, comrade Aminu Suleiman. Colleagues, I'm using it. I don't know what is happening. Excuse me. Former presiding and principal officers, management of the National Assembly, serving and former. Let me join my colleagues by thanking God Almighty for the opportunity of life and the opportunity to serve in the Nigerian Green Chamber. Let me also thank my parents for agreeing by the grace of God to bring me into this challenging world and let me also thank my constituency for giving me the opportunity to represent them in this chamber since 2011. I'm living with a very, very heavy heart, heart of losing some of the best friends that I have not found in my 43 years before coming to the National Assembly at 44. And by the grace of God, I'm living today at 57 years. I have met a lot of friends, Small east, boy. south, north, and west. Small boy. And I want to thank God for the opportunity that your leadership has given me to steer one of the most very, very challenging committee in our country. I want to specifically also appreciate all the members that we have worked with in this assembly and in the other previous assemblies. Mr. Speaker, you are truly a leader. Nobody that has spoken spoke to patronize you. And if you have gone a little to the left in the negative side, I trust this very progressive chamber, you will have received some level of heat. But I truly believe that all the positions shared by previous speakers were conclusion drawn from the heart. Your Excellency, 
when I missed to be house leader in 2019, to my greatest surprise, you came personally. And that was the day I was humbled and said, take the decision of the house and continue with your committee. I said, sir, I'm tired of this committee. Let me test some other committees. Because since I came, I have perennially been in the education committee. And you spoke in the manner you spoke that day and said the challenges will continue. The letter of our people that will be dedicated. And I also shared with you that the list I received for members, I knew are members that will complement this job. But sir, let me just share one thing that perpetually drew my respect to your good sir. You recall, Mr. Speaker, that we have had a very unfortunate situation of industrial crisis in the education sector, virtually by ASU for universities, by ASU for polytechnic, by COASU for colleges of education. Now, in all of these areas, when it goes beyond the committee, in most cases, you are always available. The last one that you have refused to tell Nigerians and you have asked us to keep, and since it is a parting day, I think I will say it so that the speaker that will succeed you will know that it's not going to be a luxury or an Eldorado alone. We had a meeting with us, Your Excellency, if you recall, and after resolving the whole issues at about 12, we got a credible information that some top people have gone to persuade the then president that ASU should be prescribed. And the draft was already preferred and it will be translated into a written form for Mr. President to sign. Your Excellency, I called you around, around 12 30 in the night and I told you this is what I had and if government proceeded with this, Nigeria will be on fire. You made some calls. You called me back, sir, around 1 a.m. and said we should meet at the gate of the pillar. And you forced an audience with the leadership of the country around 2 a.m. And it was confirmed that that incident, I call it incident, would have happened if you have not come. You saved Nigeria, you saved our system. We pray that God will also save you. I truly thank you for giving me the opportunity to again serve in this committee as we exceeded all of us out today. For those who are not returning, we pray that God Almighty will reward what we have done, forgive some of our imperfections, and provide for us what we are going to lose from the National Assembly. And for our colleagues who are returning, which are in the very minority. We wish you the best. We wish you Allah's guidance. And I'm sure... Chairman Tachara Education, your time is off. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> I, I, I have to obey, even though if I didn't uh, weave, you know... Former, have former aspirant of 9th Assembly House Leader, please, off. <laughs> former aspirant of the 9th yes, Assembly LLC. House Leader, please, off. Your yes, Excellency, I take my bow. Thank you very much, and God bless you, sir. Thank you, Honorable Aisha Duku. I was relying on the Shadan Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Mr. Speaker, former principal officers, the Deputy Speaker. My highly respected colleagues, I'm very happy to stand before you today to thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to serve and also to thank the people of Dukuna for the federal constituency 
for believing in me as the first woman to represent that constituency and to represent Gombe North. I say Alhamdulillah. Mr. Speaker, to be blessed is to be able to use the blessings to bless others. Mr. Speaker, I say Alhamdulillah because you have used your blessings to bless me. To do what? To improve the Kuna for the federal constituency. I have changed the perspectives of politics in the Silence, Kuna silence, please, silence, please. Listen because to her in silence. This is the first time that a Fulani woman, a Muslim, has been able to come out from that aspect, from that area, to represent the people. I've been able to empower, enhance, and enlighten the people. And I've also been able to bring out the women to vote, which hitherto they were not even coming out to vote. Mr. Speaker, as a legislator, I would say I'm very proud. I have been able to participate in bills that have gone to Mr. President for assent, which have been assented to, and today they are laws. Mr. Speaker, alhamdulillah, for members of my committee, I want to thank the members of the Electoral Committee for their support in seeing through to the amendment of the Electoral Act. And uh, I also want to thank our chairman, Mr. Uh, Professor Ihonvere, for the Almajri Bill. We are very proud and happy to say that we are part of this great change. Mr. Speaker, one thing I personally achieve is that I'm a better Nigerian. I've been able to travel all the states of the Federation for oversight functions, and I've seen a lot. So I'm a better Nigerian. My only setback is that all our female bills, all our gender bills, Mr. Speaker, have not been able to pass through. Mr. Speaker, you did your best. You made all the female members, members of the Constitutional Review Committee, but we were not able to achieve that. Mr. Speaker, it is time to ask for forgiveness. To err is human, but to forgive is divine. So we should forgive each other. Finally, I want to call on all Nigerians to believe in the Asiwaju Kashim Shetima team so that we can make Nigeria a better place. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Aisha. Honorable Faleke. Okay. Honorable, honorable members, please, this is a very solemn occasion. Please let, let us listen to each other in silence. Mr. Speaker, the leadership of the House, uh, 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 former principal officers of this House, my colleagues, first, I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to say one or two things. Mr. Speaker, let me congratulate you and congratulate ourselves for the opportunity God gave us and gave you in particular to lead the United Assembly. Mr. Speaker, I recall that in 2015, when we made attempt to make you speaker, God did not allow it to happen. Even though we, had the, we thought we had the numbers, but on the day of the election, some of those numbers vanished. In 2019, when we came back, God gave you this opportunity and made it your year because he had planned your future years unknown to us. Today, we are all here happy that you have led well. As human beings, there is no way you will satisfy everybody. 
But in 2019, considering the number of all of us that voted for you, I was scared as to how you are going to manage that victory. But God gave you the wisdom, and you are able to carry everybody out. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you are one that did not discriminate against party or, or religion. <laughs> Recall in 2019, honorable colleagues, when the, the tickets of Baja and Wasa came up, there were criticisms of Muslim Muslim tickets. Today, we can say boldly that we never witnessed any religious issues on this floor. And I believe strongly that Nigeria is coming of age, and by the grace of God, this country will be better off. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of my members in the Finance Committee, we want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to serve. We served. We were able to, of course, pass so many amendments to our laws, so many financial acts, finance acts that had saw the increase in our revenue from about 5.2 in 2019, 5.2 trillion in 2019 to about 10.1 trillion in 2022. That is a magnificent leap. And I want to thank my colleagues in the Finance Committee who have given us all the support, particularly when I was busy outside on the national duty. I want to have sincerely single out my deputy because I gave him the authority to continue the work. Some of our members will not do that. And today, we are better together and Nigeria is going to be better together. As you move on, as the Chief of Staff, do not forget your members. When every opportunity comes, remember that you have a team of lawyer members, both here and outside, that you need to take care of. Thank you, and God bless you. Honorable Bagos. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, right honorable colleagues. I remain Dachum Musa Bagos, uh, representing the good, great people of Just South, Just East Federal constituency from the peaceful state of Plateau. Mr. Speaker, right honorable colleagues, when growing up, the only person I saw checking the temperature of any individual was a doctor. But two, three years ago, it so happened that I saw a security man in offices, in banks, checking the temperature of a doctor before entering. Meaning, no one knows tomorrow. No one knows tomorrow, Mr. Speaker, right honorable colleagues, that most of us came from our various constituencies with different upbringing that many people never knew will be in this hallowed chamber today. 2019 came, we have seen we have discharged our duties today. We are exiting this ninth assembly as great men with our heads high, with leadership from you, right honorable speaker, because no one knows tomorrow. Right honorable speaker, distinguished colleagues, we did what we could do Nigerians saw, Nigerians applauded at some point with some issues, even we were castigated 
at some times, but then we are able to stand tall today to gladly say that you have led us well in the Ninth Assembly. We want to say thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Today you will be exiting to be the Chief of Staff. Tomorrow we don't know what you will be. No one knows tomorrow. tomorrow. Many of us are here. We don't know where. In as much as we have much and quite a number that will not come back in the 10th assembly. But God knows the destiny of each and every one of our colleagues that will not be coming back in the 10th assembly because no one knows tomorrow. We want to wish each and every one of us well and by the grace of God, tomorrow will show who we are. And by the grace of God, we will all succeed. I want to wish you well. I want to wish all our colleagues well. I want to thank you for making us to be men of which we are in this 10th assembly, because only God knows tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Bagos. Honorable Jerry Alagbazo. Thank you, our performing speaker. Mr. Speaker, I don't know whether you will agree that any of us can talk to you legislatively or rudely today because you can never be my speaker again after tomorrow. <laughs> but you may be my president, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for this privilege. With due respect, I want us to thank Guru Joshua and um, Right Honorable Toby for yielding this speech to me because they are the two principal officers we have from Southeast, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you. Today lies Tomorrow buries it. And what key today is coming to key tomorrow, Mr. Speaker. I don't know whether they are going to be executive after this. Because this is the first time Mr. Speaker is addressing us with teleprompter. <laughs> Which means he has already started practicing his role in the executive. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we always say, in your kingdom, try and remember all of us. <laughs> Why I'm saying this, Mr. Speaker, is that I've been here since the 7th Assembly. I will know the hop, steps, and jumps in management of the Assembly members. Mr. Speaker, you remember during the time of this period when Bago, His Excellency, the Governor of Niger State, and Kudigi, we are going around collecting signature of impeachment. Mr. Speaker, on the floor of the House, I said there was one man called Femi in a battle. Ninety-year-old man, 98-year-old man. He was alleged to have impregnated a 90-year-old girl. And the man started denying that he wasn't a person. Eventually, he brought a lawyer called Nkiru to defend him. They went to the court. The barrister said, my lord, this man can never impregnate this 19 year old girl. The judge said, counsel, can you prove that? He said, yeah, I can prove it. He said, Baba, remove your shokoto. <laughs> Baba removed his shokoto. And the female lawyer was touching her. Eventually, he started having an erection, Mr. Speaker. Listen, when the thing started proving otherwise, he said, my daughter, we are losing this case. So. Honorable, 
Honorable Jerry. Mr. Speaker. This is a valedictory Mr. session. Speaker. Yes. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, why am I saying this? I want to thank here principal officers for not losing the unity of this house because if you did not have people who are very loyal for you, they would have made this place uncomfortable for all of us. So I want to thank the presiding officers, you and uh, my brother Watson. I thank the majority leader and other principal officers for her to fought for you, especially in the absence. Because if they had carried documents around, some of us would have been signing, especially those who don't have faith in you. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, whether you like it or not, you are the traveler in Nigeria. When you distributed committees, you had your handshake across all the states. And I am a living witness. God will continue to bless you. The only thing is that, the only thing is that, most of us, most of us who have committees, most of us who have committees, will always note that a car with a running stomach is always better than a goat, Mr. Speaker. For this reason, the only thing, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the only thing that is remaining, the only thing that is remaining is the checks and balances in the committees. Mr. Speaker, I hope the person who will take over for you will know that within one year or two, they have a need for you to reappraise the performances of the chairman in the various committees. Because some of the chairmen, when you appoint them, they run away with all the responsibilities. Others will be complaining. So there must always be these checks and balances. Thank you very much. So on this note, I'm saying that since you are going to the executive to justice and fairness, God will help you with his grace to carry most of us along. All this we pray in Jesus Christ alone. Jaha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, former presiding officers here present, and former principal officers here present. And other invited guests, Ameja Hababao is my name. I represent Chipok, Dambua, and Goza Federal Constituency, or record, including the remaining 89 not yet recovered Chipok girls. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, you have been not only a honorable member in this chamber, but a principal officer for two decades. Mr. Speaker, there is a saying that power and authority can remain in the hand of an infidel if he is fair and just, but it will never remain in the hand of a believer if he is unfair and unjust. Because of your justice, I want to talk on behalf of new members that came in, in 2019. Mr. Speaker, you gave us a sense of belonging. You gave us support. You gave us a level playing ground to speak the minds and views of our constituents. Mr. Speaker, I can vividly recall substantial number of your committee chairmen were derived from new members elect in 2019. Another thing, we are APC. I am APC. Most of my motions 
on the floor of this house were by extension against the party against the government, but is exactly the position and the views of my constituents. But you allow me to air them. So to me, you are a very good Democrat, and we are calling on whoever is going to emerge in the 10th assembly to equally give the new members a level playing ground because there are 294 honorable members elect to be sworn in on the 13th day of this month. Mr. Speaker, secondly, I want to use this opportunity to seek for forgiveness. I am seeking for forgiveness not because I have committed a crime, but because only God knows tomorrow what will happen. So we lost almost 10 members from the beginning of this session. They will not have the opportunity to seek the forgiveness of anybody today because they are not here. Now that I am alive, in the course of my representations, I might have offended somebody either openly or subliminally. I, Honorable Ahmed Jaha Babao, do appear and present myself to, so, to seek for forgiveness from each and every one of you. Maybe in the course of my representation, I have made some unguarded utterances. I, must have, I might have offended somebody Please, I seek for your forgiveness. And for me, for me, I have forgiven. Uh, for me, I'm not carrying anybody's luggage. For me, I have forgiven everybody who must have offended me openly or subliminally. Thank you very much for this opportunity, sir. Thank you, Honorable Jaha. I think we're just quickly going to try and round up. Um, let's go to Honorable Chidoka. Thank you, right, honorable speaker, honorable colleagues. My name is Obina Chidoka, member representing Idemini North, Idemini South Federal Constituency of Anambra State. Mr. Speaker, today I want to thank the God Almighty, the one who truly knows tomorrow. I also want to thank my family especially my late mother. And I want to thank my federal constituency for this opportunity to be in this house. Mr. Speaker, I also want to thank our party for giving me the ticket to come to this hallowed chamber. Indeed, we don't know tomorrow. It was just like yesterday, we stood on the floor of this house and we elected Right Honorable Patricia Ete as the speaker. Today she is here with her deputy in Francis. And that was almost 15 Honorable years Francis. ago. And we can see she's right here. Mr. Speaker, Honorable I want Bob. to thank you. Honorable Bob and Honorable Francis, we are on live TV, please. And both of you have not taken permission from the chief whip. Let me exercise my powers very well for the last <laughs> before I before I leave this place. I don't know what awaits me there. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for your effective, efficient, diligent, focused, and convivial leadership of the Ninth House of Representatives. Mr. Speaker, you have brought your deep wealth of experience, and also for your constituency, from what we've heard today, it is a pointer to other constituents or constituencies to return their experienced members. So I want to thank you, Mayor One, for bringing you here for more than 20 years. And I want to say that your experience have guided and sailed the ship of this ninth house. 
including your legislative agenda, which you brought to bear. That legislative agenda is what has kept us as a compass to where to go in this house. I want to thank the deputy, leader, the deputy speaker of the house and also the leadership of the house, especially the minority leadership of the party which I belong to. I want to thank every one of you. As a Christian, from where you put it, it's Ecclesiastes 3, from 1 to 8, that tells us in life there is a time for everything. There is a time to be born and there is a time to die. There is a time to begin and there is a time to end. And today we stand here after four good years to begin to wind down on the Ninth National Assembly. To most of our colleagues who say farewell, for some of you here, you are going to the executive, especially the speaker. So some of you, you are returning back. For some of us, we are going to different endeavor. I want to say whatever your endeavor takes you, that the good Lord will continually be with you. Amen. I want to thank you, Mr. Speaker, for that opportunity you have given us, and for the friendship you have kept for the past almost 20, 20 years I've known you. I want to thank you for that. Our time I is off. I want to say that the good Lord will keep and bless every one of us as we go forth and as you resume as the Chief of Staff to the President, you remember every one of us, and the good Lord will keep, guide, protect us till the end of the days. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and God bless you. Thank you very much. Uh, honorable colleagues, I've just been, um, uh, some entities have come to me to say that as many members that want to speak uh, should be allowed to speak, and so shall it be for as many members that want to speak. But let's bear in mind that uh, we reduce our time one to two minutes for each for each person. So I'll go to, and um, before I do that, I'll go to Honorable Mwan Uba. As we are going to Honorable Mwan Uba, it gives me the greatest pleasure to announce that Honorable Henry Mwan Uba, one of us, has been appointed as the Executive Secretary of the Library Trust Fund of the National Assembly. Congratulations, Honorable Mwan Uba. Yeah, it's going to speak. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker Femi Hakim Bajabia Miller. Let me respectfully thank and bless this day that the Lord has made for giving me the privilege to be counted amongst the living. Today, I join my honorable colleagues to extol your qualities, to thank Nigeria, to thank the people of Mbitoli Ikeduru Federal Constituency of Imo State, who have given me the privilege to be their voice in this hallowed chamber for the past eight years. Mr. Speaker, in your speech, you have captured the essence and the difference between the ninth parliament and the other parliaments. I will not bother to go back to reel out all the achievements of this ninth parliament, but to say that in addition to all the legislative gains that we have made as a parliament, we also recorded some landmark physical advancements in the National Assembly, one of them being the passage of the National Assembly Library Trust Fund, which you have graciously just announced my humble self as the Pioneer Executive Secretary. This night assembly also has put up a defeating edifice for the National Assembly Service Commission right here in the premises. Last week, we commissioned the building of the legislative, national uh, legislative and democratic studies, an edifice along the airport road, and other very major strides that we have taken in this parliament. I dare say 
that in this ninth assembly, the PR, the goodwill, the largesse, and the personal comfort of members have been second to none. And if I echo the voices of my colleagues, let me hear a resounding amen. amen. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, let me assure all of us that in the new role in the Library Trust Fund, it will be open to deepen the democratic institutions of the National Assembly. We will work with every member that has been here before, that is returning, and that is yet to come, but is interested in the Parliament. And we shall, by the grace of God, deliver on the objectives. On this note, I wish you success in your new endeavor. I pray that the good Lord will be with all of us, and he shall meet all of us at our point of needs in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Gaza. Um, Honorable Gaza is not here. Honorable Rotimi Agusoe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Dear colleagues, um, indeed, there is a time and a season for everything under the sun. A time to be happy, a time for sober reflection, a time to plant, and a time to reap, a time to pull together, and a time to scatter, a time to be born, and a time to die. This is the time for us to appreciate God and appreciate ourselves. Mr. Speaker, in the book of Romans 9, 15, when God was talking to Moses, he said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Verse 16 of that chapter says, it is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it. It is of God that showed mercy. I think to be here today, we are enjoying the mercy of God. So many of us that came in together with us are no more. It is not by our will or by our power that we are alive. It's to the glory of God. Mr. Speaker, I want to appreciate you. I want to appreciate you for what you have done for me, for your love, for your support, and what you have done for this house. May God bless you. May God continue to lead you in your new endeavor. And I want to appreciate my party, APC, the leadership of my party, my constituents that gave me the opportunity to serve from 2015 to 2023. Also, I want to appreciate Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the president of the country, who gave me the opportunity to serve in Lagos State as special advisor to him when he was governor on physical planning and urban development and also to serve under Mr. Babatude Raji Pashola as the Commissioner for Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs. Also, I want to appreciate the First Lady of Nigeria in the name of Senator Olure Mitinubu for her support throughout this journey. Also, I want to appreciate my jewel of inestimable value and my children for giving me peace of mind to serve my constituents, because without the peace of mind they gave me, I would not be able to serve. Now, I want to talk on the oil subsidy. You see, the days of boom are past. We are in the days of perseverance, endurance, and patience. What must be done to move the country forward must be done. I am appealing to those that are coming back, because I am not coming back, but those of us that are coming back and the new ones to work together and to work with the executive 
to move this country forward. Bearing in mind that we are not all in the same boat, but we are in the same storm. Some have yachts, some have kettles, and some are drowning. In any way, we can help our people. Well, we me we your time is try off. as much as possible to help them. So I am telling, I am, I am thanking you for the opportunity. My dear colleagues, may God bless you as you move forward. Thank you, and God bless. If we are related, thank you. we shall meet again. Honorable Rotimi, thank you very much. Um, Honorable Halims. Please, please, Honorable Members. One, one minute, one, one As minute. I said earlier on, this is a solemn occasion. We we'll listen to each other in silence. Please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My distinguished honorable colleagues. Our former leadership, the clerk of this assembly. I want I am Honorable Abdullah Ibrahim Ali Halims. I come from Kogi State and I represent the good people of Ankwa Omala Olamaboro Federal Constituency. Today, I really want to thank God for his mercy as we mark the end of the ninth assembly. I'll start by thanking Almighty God for the great opportunity given to all of us here for the service we've rendered our constituency and by extension Nigeria for the last four years. Mr. Speaker, as you are aware, through you, opportunities have come our way in various degrees that enabled us to have served our country. I want to thank you, thank my constituency, and thank my colleagues for this wonderful opportunity. Today, God has given you another wonderful opportunity to serve our country in the capacity of the Chief of Staff to the Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We, and I in particular, am proud of you. Today, as we journeyed into the next assembly, to those of us who are lucky to have come back, I seek that we all remember that it's another great opportunity to serve our motherland. We remember, just as various speakers have said, we came in in numbers. Along the road, somewhere along the line, some of us have gone beyond this wonderful world. We pray that God in his infinite mercy grant them eternal rest. At this point, I want to thank God that Nigeria is in a renewed hope state. And we pray that the next government will be more useful, more prosperous to the entire country. I thank you. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much.
Honorable TJ Kogi. Honorable members, please don't interrupt the attention of the presiding officer. As I said earlier, this occasion is a very solemn occasion, and Mr. Speaker, attention should be 100% on the proceedings. Please don't go and disrupt, distract the attention of the Speaker, please. The right Honorable Speaker, Honorable colleagues, my name is Yusuf Ahmed Tijani, member representing Okene. Ogurumagogo Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, this is the moment to give much thanks to Almighty God, to see us to the end of this ninth assembly section. Honorable Dembata. Honorable Mr. Speaker, this is another moment. Please, uh, to Jan. Please, please. Nobody should approach the speaker. The speaker's attention is highly needed. Mr. Speaker, this is another moment to show condolence to some of our members that has left us behind. Mr. Speaker, from your humble self and the members of this chamber, we all have done very well. We have done very well in the sense that we have touched almost all areas that we need to address in this life. Mr. Speaker, I want to sincerely thank you for giving me the privilege to chairman House Committee on the FCT Area Council and Auxiliary Matter. Mr. Speaker, during the course of our engagement with all the stakeholders of the FCT, we have done a lot, done a lot in the sense that there was a time the committee was able to engage the area council members and the, um, the, the, teaching, the teachers in the area council too to avert some of the, you know, anticipated strike. Mr. Speaker, my committee has been able to equally engage to make sure we make case for the satellite towns. Because if you look at Abuja, FCT, a lot has been done. We need to shift attention to some of these satellite towns for proper development. Mr. Speaker, during the course of our engagement too, there are one critical issues that we need to address, of which the 7th Assembly, the 8th Assembly, and the 9th Assembly has done very well to make sure that you know, those areas are being addressed, but we couldn't. And since now that God is taking you to the other side, I want you to still be the part of the struggle to make sure that that particular issue is achieved. And that is um, local government autonomy. Mr. Speaker, there are much that even the past leaders of this country could be achieved. But for the fact that the local government has been, you know, killed totally, the functions of the local government is not noticed. Let this house keep on struggling to make sure that autonomy is returned to the local government. Mr. Speaker, I can't thank the people of Okene and Ogunimagogo Federal Constituency enough. I hold them at a very high esteem. Their place in my heart cannot be quantified. Mr. Speaker, for them to have been elected me into this chamber for more than a decade now, I said, Okene, Ogorimagungu, thank you very much. God bless you all, and God bless Nigeria. Thank you. I think, honorable colleagues, um, I know there's, um, there's so many people that want to speak. We'll, I will go to the principal officers now, and then maybe when there's time, we'll come back. But let's go straight to the principal officers. Uh, it's already almost 2 o'clock. 
We'll start with the Honorable, the Deputy. Oh, before that, Honorable Fulata, you wanted to give us a revision of the bills and motions. And then after that, we'll go to the Deputy Speaker. Honorable Fulata. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To honorable colleagues. Mr. Speaker, I am Abokara Sanfulata. I represent Purniwa Krikasama, Guli Federal Constituency of Jigao State. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, permit me to identify silence, silence, please, silence, the please. achievements of the Nines Assembly. Mr. Speaker, Benila, welcome back. Colleagues, I want to authoritatively inform this House that the Nines Assembly is the most productive. It is the most productive of all the assemblies in the history of National Assembly. And here are the statistics. The Nines Assembly processed 2,232 bills. Out of these, 52 are executive bills. 163 are bills from the Senate. And 2,017 are members' bills. So, Speaker, out of this figure still, bills awaiting second reading are 1,197. Bills refers to committee 581. Bills reported by the committees 275. Bills pending in the committees 308. Bills awaiting committees. Bills within the committee of the whole 106. Bills laid on table awaiting consideration 64. Bills passed 510. Bills killed negative 13 and bills withdrawn by their sponsors, five. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. Mr. Speaker, the House also passed 2,000 motions, 2,000 in total. Mr. Speaker, all these could not have been achieved but for your able leadership you and your deputy, Ahmed Edis Wase, who is also the chairman of the Committee of the Hall. Mr. Speaker, may I also seize the opportunity, this opportunity, to thank members and staff of the House Committee on Rules and Business. I also want to seize this opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to appreciate the table staff and the able leadership of the, of the clerk. They are the most hardworking. All these bills, all these achievements couldn't have been attained without their input. They are the ones, they come first, they come very early, 7 a.m., and they leave around 8, sometimes up to 10 p.m. Mr. Speaker, we should appreciate the stable staff and staff of the House Committee on Rules Business. I hope, Mr. Speaker, in the next assembly, whoever becomes the Speaker, a special allowance should be created for these staff to appreciate them. Thank you. Okay, we'll start in ascending order. Is Honorable Ikiruka there? Honorable Deputy Leader. Uh. Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, can we honor all these valedictory sessions? Honorable members. Can please. we allow this validity to Silence, come to a proper please. end, please? It is the turn of the principal officers. 
speaker should please no. step down. Blessing. To allow speaker. Don't join anybody here. Blessing. I'll come back to you. I need to pay proper attention to the validity session. Honorable I'm losing. All right. Let me just attend to this, and then after that, please, everybody, just leave me okay. alone after this. Member, please. Mr. Speaker, we're losing grip of this validity session. Once I nobody joins blessing again, please. After this, uh, yes. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, past leaders of the House of Representatives who are here present, I am Comrade Peter Ohyonzoje Apatasi, MNI. I represent the great people of Silence, please. Silence, please. I am from Edo State. Mr. Speaker, my colleagues, I want to specially thank all of you for the partnership that we have had over the past four years in this night assembly. I also wish to use this opportunity to thank the man that handed over the baton to me in Akokwedo Ferra constituency 12 years ago, who is here seated among the past you know, leaders of this house. I'm talking about Colonel Chief leader, Akogu, who was the leader of the House before me. Mr. Speaker, my colleague, I especially thank Almighty God for giving me the opportunity to serve Akoko Edu people. Silence, please. Silence, please. Silence, please. Blessing. Horrible blessing. Take your seat. Horrible blessing. Horrible Victor Wokolo. Horrible Victor Wokolo, please. Horrible Francis Mailo. Horrible Francis Mailo, take your seat. If not, we'll tell our daughter to come back home. Mr. Speaker, I also specially thank the great people of Akoko Edo Ferra constituency. A unique constituency for that matter. One of the oldest local governments in Nigeria. I represent the people of a single local government uh, constituency but highly heterogeneous in terms of cultural and social you know, uh, uh, existence. But they have been kind enough to give me the first opportunity, the second opportunity. Mr. Speaker, they also gave me a third opportunity to be here, and now a fourth one. I can't thank Akoko Edo people enough, but I just pray that God Almighty will continue to bless them for me, and also, I want to make a very strong pledge to my people that I will continue to do my best in this place to deliver the dividends of democracy to our people and also to Nigeria as a nation. Mr. Speaker, you've been a wonderful leader in this house for so many reasons, but I'm particular about your very strong desire to always ensure that workers, members of the you know, civil society bodies in this country are given adequate attention at every point in time. Mr. Speaker, you intervene in so many you know, uh, actions of labor and civil society. And on one of those occasions, I remember how you insisted that if the executive are proactive enough 
most of the crises that we have in this country would not have had them. I quite agree completely with that contention because the truth of the matter is that if the executive approach the issues while labor and civil society people are starting the process of agitation and objectively address their uh, 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 complaints, we will not have the kind of problem that we have had in this country. I'm saying this and emphasizing it because we have another situation on ground just now. And I thank God Almighty that you, the proactive speaker of the Ninth Assembly, have been graciously nominated as the Chief of Staff to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mr. Speaker, that which you preached and which you practiced in the House, we want to see you do more of it now that you are going to become a member of the executive arm of government. Mr. Speaker, I am convinced that some of those challenges that we had in the past are not likely to happen again because you have what it takes to profile solution proactively and to advise the government, you know, courageously to ensure that issues are handled at the right time. Let me also use this opportunity to thank my dear colleagues. Let me thank my dear colleagues for the cooperation over the years. I want to thank those who will be leaving at the end of this session and that are not coming back in the Tenth Assembly for the cooperation that we had. And also to pray God Almighty to be with you wherever you are heading next and to provide other means of you know, uh, leadership for you as you continue your life. For those of us that are coming back in the Tenth Assembly, I thank God for all of us and I want to seek your cooperation as we move into the Tenth Assembly because I'll be coming up with a whole lot of you know, emotions and bills for my constituency, and I will need your support at every point in time. Thank you very much, and God bless all of you. Thank you, Honorable Guru Kwa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Colleagues. I am Kiru Kaoje Georgia. I represent leaders, leaders. the good people of Isukwatu Munoj Federal Constituency. I am from Abia State. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, today marks a momentous occasion as I stand before you to deliver what I call my valedictory speech as the Deputy Chief Whip of this Honorable House. It is with a mixture of pride, gratitude to God, and a touch of nostalgia that I reflect on my time serving as Deputy Chief Whip of House of Representatives. First and foremost, I want to express my heart heartfelt appreciation to my beloved constituents, the good people of Isukwatu Munoj Federal Constituency, to my parents, especially my grandmother who brought me up, my party and my fellow lawmakers who entrusted me with the responsibility and privilege of serving as legislator and deputy chief whip of Ninth Assembly. It has been an immense honor to uphold the responsibilities of this esteemed position, working diligently to ensure discipline and coordination within our party and in our legislative proceedings. Throughout my tenure, I witnessed the power of teamwork, cooperation, and principled leadership. As the Deputy Chief Whip, I had the opportunity of working closely with the Chief Whip to maintain dignity and integrity during plenary sessions. His support has been invaluable, and I am grateful for his knowledge and insights. I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to the Speaker of the Ninth House of Representatives. You made us proud, 
Right Honorable Femi Wajabia Mila, I thank you for your unwavering support for me personally, for your guidance and camaraderie. Your leadership and direction have been instrumental, enabling me carry out my responsibility effectively. Mr. Speaker, I thank you for your dedication and professionalism in successfully navigating the Ninth House of Representatives through the challenging political landscapes. On behalf of the Speaker, I have the privilege to leave the delegation of ACP-EU Joint Parliamentary Assembly for the Ninth Assembly. As Deputy Chief Whip, I uh, work with Honorable the Honorable please take your seat. Officers and other principal officers to provide leadership and stability in the House. As a lawmaker, I was entrusted with the responsibility of crafting legislation to address the needs and aspirations of the people I represent. I had the privilege of sponsoring, co-sponsoring, introducing and debating several critical pro people bills, motions and revolutions, resolutions that brought about meaningful change in our society. To promote women inclusion in the National Assembly, I sponsored a bill on special seats for women in the legislature. With the support of many of my colleagues, both male and female, we made history as it was the first time such an ambitious bill was presented before the National Assembly. I consider our attempt a bold but timely move. No. Honorable Gaza. Considering the social, cultural obstacles women face in attempting to occupy leadership positions in our society, as lawmakers, we were faced with the challenge of the legislative process, which entailed navigating complex political landscapes, cultural beliefs, differing viewpoints, and the need for compromise. While we may not have achieved the desired outcome of passing that piece of legislation, it does not diminish the importance of the issue it sought to address. The issue of women political exclusion, neither did it belittle our efforts and the impact we made along the way. We know significant improvement in the number of women who won legislative seats after the 2023 elections. This issue remains critical for Nigeria, both at home and internationally. I make bold to say that several countries are looking up to us to take the lead on this matter and not to leave from behind. I sincerely hope that the incoming Tenth House puts this on the front burner with the support of our amiable Chief of Staff that may bring it from the executive arm. We must remember that progress is not always linear and the path to meaningful legislative change can be challenging. However, our efforts contributed to raising awareness, stimulating public discourse, and laying the groundwork for future discussions on this pressing matter. While we may not have reached a consensus on this important piece of legislation, and indeed some other important bills, the process itself has been invaluable in fostering dialogue, deepening our understanding and shaping our future actions. I would like to express my heartfelt appreciation to my colleagues, especially the speaker who stood alongside me in advocating for the special six bill and other key bills of national importance. Your dedication passion and commitment to provide to improving the lives of our constituents have been commendable. Our collective efforts serving as a reminder that despite our differences, we share a common goal 
of working towards a better future. Throughout my legislative journey, uh, uh, I have tackled a wide range of issues that touched the lives of my constituents. I have served on various committees, including judiciary and so many committees. I have championed bills aimed at promoting social justice, economic growth, environmental stability, educational investment, and counseling other areas. Of note are critical bills. Of note are three critical bills that receive presidential assent. The National Senior Citizen Center Act 2017, Compulsory Treatment and Care for Victims of Gunshots Act 2017, and Anti Torture Act 2017. Honorable colleagues, with your, pen, um, with your kind permission, I will round off in two minutes. Finally, Jagaban, Jagaban. I want Please, to express my there is a standing order, Jagaban. Honorable Jagaban, there is a standing order that you nobody should walked, approach the speaker. Please step down. Me. Unless you want a disciplinary action in your last day of say in the, national, in the House of Reps. <laughs> you, Honorable Jagaban, you will be cited for indiscipline on your last day in the Ninth House of Representatives. I want to express my gratitude to all my colleagues who have worked alongside me in this legislative endeavor. Your dedication, intellect, and commitment to the betterment of our society have been an inspiration to me. Together we have shown that collaboration, open dialogue, and respect for diverse opinions are the cornerstone of effective lawmaking. I am proud of the collaborative spirit and dedication that I witnessed in this legislative body. Let us not forget the countless hours spent in committee rooms and in meetings, pouring over draft bills, proposing amendments, and striving to strike the right balance between different perspectives. It is through this diligent process that we crafted legislation and, up, and adopted resolutions that reflects the collective wisdom of this esteemed assembly. I'm skip, skipping it. To the clerk of National Assembly, the clerk of House of Representatives of Committee, the clerks that worked with me in past committees, I thank you all. Finally, 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 this is one time opportunity for you. Finally, please. I have to be gender sensitive. You have to be gender sensitive. Permit me to extend my appreciation to the support staff and aides who work tirelessly behind the scenes, ensuring that our operations run smoothly behind the scenes. Your contributions, although often unseen, have, have been essential to the overall functioning of the House of Representatives. And I am grateful for your hard work and dedication. May I especially appreciate the work of Policy and Legacy Advocacy Centre, PLAC, led by Mr. Clement Wanko, for their support to my work, particularly on the Special Seats Bill and for their dedication to promote women's representation in the National Assembly. I also commend them for supporting several other legislative initiatives at the National Assembly. Most importantly, I would also like to express my sincere appreciation to the people I represent, the good people of Isukwatu Munoji Federal Constituency, the citizens who entrusted me with their hopes, dreams, and concerns. It is their voice that made me to have this, that name still on duty. It is their goodwill and prayers that have guided me in my legislative journey. 
and it is their well-being that remains at the heart of my endeavors. As we draw the curtain of the Ninth House of Representatives, I do so with a sense of gratitude to the Almighty God and to everyone who's come my way, who supported me. To the Speaker, Deputy Speaker, House Leader, Chief Whip, Deputy Leader, Minority Leader, Deputy Minority Leader, Minority Whip, Deputy Minority Whip, thank you for the memories we shared. Thank you for the laughter. Thank you for the joy. And for my colleagues, to my colleagues of Ninth Assembly, I love you all. May God continue to bless you and keep you and um, <laughs> enjoy me while I laugh. I would like to close the Ninth House of Assembly on this excerpt from Proverbs, specifically Proverbs 3, 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. What? In all thy ways, acknowledge Honorable. him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Amen. God bless you all. God bless the Federal House of Representatives. Honorable Member from Anambra, please. The Federal Republic please. of Nigeria. God bless all of us. Step down, Thank please. And goodbye. Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir. I think Honorable Inkiruka should be made to circulate 360 copies of her speech round to the members of the House, please. Because it's a prepared speech, very unusually. The Chief Whip. The Chief Whip that will go to the minority side. I'll leave the. Uh, the silence, speaker please. Silence, there. please. The Chief Whip is, the Chief Whip is going to make his valedictory speech. Silence, please. Silence. Honorable Nasir, take your seat. The Chief Whip has the floor, please. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Maki. Honorable Maki, please take your seat. Please. Honorable Lodi Odokuk, take your seat. Honorable Fred. Honorable Shetima. Honorable Nahis, take your seat. Honorable Shetima, take your seat. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Members. My name is Mohamed Tahir Mwaguno. I represent Marte Monguno, Genze Imperial Constituency of Borno State. First and foremost, I want to use this solemn occasion to thank members of my constituency for first voting me into this hallowed chambers in 1992. I came here as a very young active man and leaving this house with a gray hair and trans sitting to the Senate. I want to seize this opportunity to thank members of my constituency for reposing their confidence in me to represent them in this hallowed chambers for fifth for five terms. I sincerely thank them. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, my journey, my sojourn in this house is akin to a journey of life. It is punctuated with trials, travails, and tribulations. Mr. Speaker, I, I can recall with deep sense of nostalgia, when in 2015 I contested okay, as Deputy Speaker and your humble self as Speaker of this Hall of Chambers, but we lost with a very, very narrow margin. The exemplary leadership that you have exhibited that time is an example for everybody to show. You accepted our defeat with philosophical calmness as an act of vote and moved on. 
and give absolute cooperation to the incoming leadership. You accepted your defeat with gallantry, and that is what is supposed to be exhibited in our larger democratic experience. Those that are victorious in democratic contests should be magnanimous in victory, and those that are defeated in a credible and transparent democratic contest should achieve, accept their defeat with gallantry. And you have exhibited that. I salute your courage for that. And it's an example for upcoming generation of politicians in this country. Mr. Speaker, again, I salute your courage with respect to maintaining and jealously guarding and protecting the independence of the institution of the legislature, in spite of the fact that your emergence as Speaker of the House of Representatives is with the active support of the legislature, of, of the executive arm of government, sorry. That notwithstanding, you jealously guarded and protected the independence of the legislature in your pronouncements and your actions. We salute you for that. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, to the generality of members here, one of the most difficult jobs to perform in this chamber is that of the TIP whip. I am vested with the authority of calling my colleagues to order in the exercise of that function. If I, am, if I might have done anything wrong to any member, please, I seek your forgiveness. I did so in the exercise of the functions of my office. And as I transit to the hallowed chamber, to the, to, the, to the red chamber, as Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I assure you that I'm going to be a very good ambassador of this house in the Senate, and I will continuously, jealously guard and protect the sanctity of this house and then the independence of this house. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Whip. Honorable Toby. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, I want to use this solemn opportunity to convey my gratitude to God and to members of this parliament, to the Deputy Speaker, to the Principal Officers, and my honorable colleagues. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I've been here for 12 years. And I'm immensely grateful for the kindness and warmth I've felt across all the members, and particularly you, Mr. Speaker, and the principal officers. Many of us forget that the inaugural session of the Nigerian House of Representatives took place in 1955. And it was a British citizen. It was a British citizen that was the first speaker in 1955. The first indigenous speaker came in 1959, and that was Judge Anwachukwu. That presupposes that we are here today because our democracy has continued to be strong. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, Nigerians believe that the nation is strong when the parliament is strong because they act as checks and balances for the executive.
my membership of the House of Representatives has given me a lot of opportunities. Mr. Speaker, I've been Deputy Chairman of the Committee on Ethics and Privileges. I've been Chairman of the House Committee on Works. I'm presently the Deputy Minority Leader. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I have crisscrossed various disciplines. I graduated in the humanities, I graduated in management, and also read law. None of these my travels could give me the opportunity of to learn what I have learned in the House of Representatives. We have about 360 professors here from various constituencies in Nigeria. They have their inclinations, they have their tendencies, and they have all, in combination, made me better as a parliamentarian, as a Nigerian. I've had the opportunity to succeed in a number of things. In areas where I failed, I hold myself responsible. In areas where I overcame, I give that is due to the kindness of my colleagues. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, a friend of mine on live television a few days ago said that monkeys have been jumped because three near three. That a monkey knows how to jump because near three near three near, near, near three. We have been able to do some of the things we do, particularly me, because the members of the House have been here. Because of the people of Vanilla of Goji River Federal Constituency, because of people we have had to interact with, we have had to interface with in the ministries and agencies. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I have, as a representative of my people, been able to intervene in education, in various infrastructural projects, and in a number of programs that could be for the benefit of our people. We've been able to do this by motions, by bills, and by various public hearings we've had. A particular instance, Mr. Speaker, during the Eighth Assembly, you will recall that the second Niger Bridge was controversial. The Lagos Ibadan was very controversial. But because of the inherent capacity of this parliament to intervene in the affairs of Nigeria, Mr. Speaker, we were able to do that. We removed the jinx in some of the projects, the things that encumbered them. And that is why the executive found it necessary to continue with Second Niger Bridge to do Bede Boni and Abuja Kano. And then, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, the parliament has experienced its successes and its traumas. We have seen the speaker, Mr. Speaker, we have seen you move from a vibrant, a vibrant and important opposition leader to a tranquil majority leader, as well as a struggling speaker, continually finding it difficult, but dutifully depending the policies, actions and inactions of the government and party in power. Mr. Speaker, you have recently been appointed Chief of Staff to Mr. President. My very warm congratulations. Moving from the House after six times is quite instructive. After five times is quite instructive. Mr. Speaker, you were three steps away from the presidency in our order of succession. But today, it is clear that you are close to the presidency, apparently through the back door. My very warm congratulations, Mr. Speaker. 
moving from house to the executive, it is very clear that we will, we've been able to build bridges. It is therefore fascinating, Mr. Speaker. It is therefore fascinating. Well, let me repeat. I said that you have recently been appointed Chief of Staff. As a speaker, you were three steps away from the presidency. You were three steps away from the presidency in our order of succession. Can I have your ideas now? Mr. Speaker, I said as a speaker, you were three steps away in our succession plan to the presidency. Today, you have got into the presidency, apparently through the back door. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it is our hope that you will be a bridge. It is therefore a fascinating seismic shift where the president was a senator and a governor, the vice president a senator and a governor. Even the first lady was a senator. The secretary to the government, a senator and governor. And chief of staff, a veteran parliamentarian and speaker. For the first time in our history, we have quite an uncanny composition of those who have seen Nigeria in its beauty and nakedness. In his inaugural address in 1933, Franklin Roosevelt asserted his firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. With those, with the composition of the executive, of those who have seen the legislative arm and the executive arm, we have nothing to fear. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, Here, we have also witnessed the parliament stand firm. And we have also witnessed historic resilience. Speaker Tambua had to disguise alongside his deputy, Honorable Megi Hedioha, to contest and win their positions. Parliamentarians and the present speaker had to climb fence, fences to defend this parliament. At another time, Senator Abubakar Saraki had to disguise and be smuggled into the National Assembly to avoid arrest as they presided over the Senate. At other times, it was Leviko Guaramadu. Leader. Mr. Speaker, we stood firm. There is no good saying that these combat situations were a good spot for the optics and pleasing to some members of the public. I believe that we acted for the common good. It is therefore understandable when Nigerians do not discern when a party has a dominant majority in parliament that is willing to carry through the wishes of his party. All put together, the Ninth Assembly achieved a number of milestones. We regularized the budget cycle. We also passed the PIA and the Electoral Act. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I want to round up. As the session closes, Mr. Speaker, I say farewell to my colleagues for us to meet again. I want to thank my friends in this parliament, my constituents, my wife, Uche, and my children, Ikedi, Sonia, Nnamdi, and Duli, for standing by me. For the bills on road fund 
our road management that we passed towards eight and ninth assemblies, which were not assented to by Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Speaker, the bills we are not able to pass, we expect that the tenth assembly will be able to deal with it. The science to road management is to do what is practiced in other jurisdictions. It's not an old budget. The user has to fund the roads. I thank you, my colleagues, our former principal officers, the members of parliament. I wish you all well. May God bless all of us. Thank you very much. Please, you, honorable members, please, silence, please. Two, two minutes strictly, please, honorable members, yeah, we please. Have about, we have about 10 more minutes for coverage, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, my name is Honorable Gideon Gwani. I come from Kaduna State and I represent Kaura Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I wish to recognize you as a wonderful speaker and I also want to thank the Almighty God for giving me the opportunity and privilege to serve in this Ninth Assembly. Mr. Speaker, I wish to also thank the leadership of the Ninth Assembly and also to thank our bosses. The, my honorable colleagues. Let me at this point recognize our former presiding officers, our former clerks, and indeed the management of the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, let me start with you to thank you for the things you have done silently for me. I'm so grateful, and I'm sure you've done the same to so many of our colleagues. Mr. Speaker, I also want to, I also wish to thank my constituents, our federal constituency, who have given me the opportunity and privilege to serve them in the last 16 years in this House of Representatives in the National Assembly. I pray that God will keep my constituents safe, and I pray that they, they will also prosper. I wish to thank you, Mr. Speaker, and indeed, my honorable colleagues, for the great work we have put into place through the achievements that we have been able to do through collaborative and incorporation in order to remove competition and to also put us to be focused on what we need to do for the benefit of the people of Nigeria. No doubt, Mr. Speaker, our experiences cannot be allowed to go in vain. We are better off now than when we started in the Ninth Assembly in 2019. Our character, of course, has been molded and that this experience will help us to continue to create light in the lives of others so that our almighty God will also lighten our path as we journey ahead. Mr. Speaker, finally, let me congratulate all of us for getting to this level and to finally wish us a prosperous journey in all our endeavor. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Minority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I remain on a bond today, Godwin Elumelu, and I represent the good people of Anyo Church Mirifaya Constituency. I'm proudly from Delta State. Mr. Speaker, 58 years ago, by God's blessing, I was born into the family of Elumelu. And when I was born, 
Mr. Speaker, I'm not sure as at that time when my mother and my father were doing the whole assemble that they were, there was any prophecy that would be a politician. Nor was there any prof prophecy that would be a member of House of Reps. Or was there any prophecy that would be a minority leader? Or was there any prophecy that would serve under your leadership? That is why I call myself man of destiny. Because everything is about God. What I have been for the past 58 years has been but God. When I came in, I was fresh. But God did it. And to the glory of God, through the leadership of Madam Ete, I was made House Committee Chairman of Power. And it has been good, Mr. Speaker. So I have no any other reason but to thank God, because he alone gives power. It is only God that gives power. He gives to whoever that he decides that he wants to give. And for that, I thank him. Mr. Speaker, because of time, let me profusely thank my wife, my children that have suffered during this period. But for them, it will not have been possible for me to have the time to be there. But most importantly, let me thank three governors who took time to nurture me. Of course, Governor Ibori, who cleared the way for me to enter the house. And of course, Governor Duaga nurtured me, and Governor Kowa brought me to maturity. And today, my governor, right on Abu Sharif Oborowori, is also providing down more attention to the people of Delta State, which includes me. So for everything that I've achieved, I give thanks to God. But most importantly, I want to thank the minority caucus and the whole entire house, the leadership of this house, ranging from you, his deputy speaker, and everybody, for giving me the opportunity to, be, to stand here as the minority leader. I don't take it for granted. I love everybody. I love my colleagues. I love the members of the minority caucus. I love the entire house. All I can say is that there is a future, and God has provided a future for us. It is only those who don't believe in God that should be afraid of their future. But when you believe in God and trust in him, in truth and in spirit, he will always provide for you. Mr. Speaker, I will not sit down without congratulating you. There's a song that says, I didn't know he will honor me this way. I didn't know that God will honor you this way. When you rolled out your achievements, it's just but for God. It's God that did it, not man. I remember also, but God did it for you, for your loyalty and consistency. I remember that I walked up to you. I said, all these people say they want to be president. You are more qualified to be president. And you told me that Tinubu has done a lot for you and your family, and you will never betray him. And for that, you will stand by him, whether he wins or he loses. And look at the price of being and being consistent and being loyal to your master. And that is why today God has given you chief of staff. You merit it. And I believe when I saw the labor, one, the court proceedings, two, your signature signing that they should suspend the strike, I told somebody sitting beside me that the time of strike in Nigeria is over with your being chief of staff in this government. Because you have done so many things, and your empathy for the Nigerian people is what I commend you for. I remember during the Ebola, uh, uh, during the, the COVID, when our Nigerians in diaspora were being maltreated. Mr. Speaker, you summoned the Chinese ambassador, and you made sure that they solved that issue, because there, were video, there was a video going around as per how Nigerians were maltreated. You didn't stop at that. In Ghana, where Nigerians were being maltreated, you went there. This shows leadership. And you have exhibited that leadership here. You have carried everybody along. Nobody is perfect. And everybody claiming to be perfect is only God. If you are not God, you can never be perfect. So let me thank you. Wish you well. You will do well as the chief of staff. And Nigeria will be better for it. And I believe that Nigeria, even our colleagues, also will be better for it. Once again, I love you. 
I love my colleagues. I love, of course, the clerk, the members of the clerk's team, but most importantly, the press that have given us the opportunity for Nigerians to hear us and know what we are doing. I love them. May God bless us, and may God bless the House, and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minority Leader. Leader of the House. The Leader of the House has the floor. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. I thank you once again, Mr. Speaker. Members, can you please take your seat? You are making a lot of noise. Please take your seats. Leave the aisle, take your seats, and be quiet, please, so that we can wrap this up. Honorable Kuye, thank you. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Speaker of the Ninth House of Representatives, Right Honorable Pemi Bajabia Miller. My Deputy Speaker, the Deputy Speaker of the Ninth House of Representatives, Right Honorable Ahmed Idris Wase, our former presiding officers, former colleagues, and former members of the body of principal officers of the House of Representatives that are here, my respected colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, let me use the normal order to say that I rise here as Honorable Ado Dogua, Mr. Speaker, representing Dogua to the Wada Federal Constituency in this great session of the Ninth House of Representatives. Mr. Speaker, I am of the APC extraction today and indeed tomorrow. Mr. Speaker, I want to say that because of want of time, I will be unusually brief. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, my respected colleagues, as, other, as others may have said, today, today is a day for sober and moral reflections. Mr. Speaker, it's not for moral or sober reflections because it's a valedictory session. I want to also believe that it's a day... Honorable Alabi, please take your seat. Honorable colleagues, the leader has the floor. Go ahead. Mr. Speaker, I want to say that it's not only for sober or moral reflections. It is for me a day of accomplishment a day of accomplishment for each and every one of us here individually and collectively. We are today here making a milestone of this very great institution. Mr. Speaker, we are today here making another great history of winding down the session and the business of this institution in the name of the Ninth House of Representatives. And on this note, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, permit me to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has spared our lives our wealth, our well-being, to witness this great day. Mr. Speaker, I would like to also join suit with other members of the House who took their time to say thank you, thank you, thank you, my constituents. I thank my constituents, members of Dogua, Chudungwada Federal Constituency, who have continuously reinforced their confidence in me and bringing me back to this House right from the fourth day of July, 1992, till today. Mr. Speaker, of course, with some breaks. But I am proud to say that I have undergone an election process seven times, and I won seven times. Mr. Speaker, I am grateful. I am grateful to my constituents and my people. Mr. Speaker, permit me to also say a very good thank you, very good thank you, and perhaps pay special tribute to my late father, late Ado Garba Dogua, a former member of Kano State House of Assembly, a member of the defunct PRP in the Second Republic. Mr. Speaker, I rode on his back and on the back of that great family to be here seven times. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I would like to say that we are all here as accomplished members. We are not only accomplished, we are going back home as fulfilled members of this great institution. Mr. Speaker, it doesn't matter whether you have made it back to the 10th Assembly, for me, whether you made it back to the 10th Assembly or you have not made it back to the 10th Assembly, the fact remains that we are today here as winners. We are winners because for those who are coming to continue from where we are stopping today, they are winning. And for those of us who are going out there,
to continue the nation building in different capacities, they are also winners. Mr. Speaker, I will take you a very good example. You have been here for the past 20 years. You have served this institution and the great country, Nigeria, assiduously and with all sense of determination and commitment. And while you are stopping here today, as the Speaker of the Green Chambers of the House of Representatives, the house you have always tagged as the house of the Nigerian people, you are, by God's grace, stepping into another big shoe, a shoe that will now provide what I can call a great link a bridge with someone who has the legislative and parliamentary experience to build bridges between the institution of the executive arm of government and the institution of the legislature in the case of Nigeria that we call the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, I also see you not only building bridges between the two institutions, you are also by your background, professional background, you have a great opportunity to also build a very great relationship between the three arms of government, including the judiciary because your legal background will provide some experience, will provide some professional thought that you can be able to build a good relationship between the executive and the judiciary, of course. Mr. Speaker, we all here, right, we are all here seated and also proud to associate with your success. Mr. Speaker, every one of us here is happy that you are stepping in into the office of the Chief of Staff to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Ahmed Bola Tinubu. We are all proud. I want to believe you may be going there alone as a person, but all of us feel as if we are also going there to act as chief of staff to the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria because you are one of us. And I want to believe part of the judgment, part of the assessment, part of the analysis which Mr. President must have made to pick you there, I'm sure is because of your diligent service and dedication in service as the speaker of this great ninth house of representatives. So I believe, Honorable Ndudu Elimelu, is by extension a chief whip, uh, sorry, a chief of staff to the president. I believe Honorable Goni uh, is also serving on court as chief of staff to the president. The deputy speaker who is seated here and all other members that are seated here, Mr. Speaker, we see ourselves as an extension of your humble self. And while you are there, we will continue to communicate, consult, and be able to be feeding you with the pulse of the nation. We will tell you what the man on the street feels. We will tell you what the woman in the, in the market feels. We will tell you what our farmers feel so that Mr. President could always have the pulse of the poorest people on the street. You are being there, Mr. Speaker, is not only special. It's going to provide a very big opportunity for the 360 constituencies in the presidency because I believe you will never cut this relationship. Contacts connections with the 360 members of the House of Representatives will continue because I know you have that humility. Mr. Speaker, let me say that as leader of the House of Representatives, chosen by God and by your personal leave and the leave of this House, I am today a fulfilled and fulfilled individual because basically all members seated here gave me all the, all the cooperation, the support to be able to achieve what I've achieved as leader of the Ninth House of Representatives. Mr. Speaker, you have also accorded me great opportunity. Great opportunity in the sense that most cases, speakers were given House leaders by the choice of the National Working Committee of their party. Mr. Speaker, I could remember I was, of course, blessed by the National Working Committee, but I am, I am today and I have been the leader of the Ninth House of Representatives courtesy of your personal decision and judgment that you have confidence in me and you want to work with me in this capacity as the leader of the House of Representatives. This I will take home. This I will take to my family. This I will take to my brothers that I have served you diligently without any cause for regret, either on your own part and on my own part. You have given me all the leverage to work in this capacity and I think I have done the best I could to serve my nation and serve your confidence that you have reinforced in me. Mr. Speaker, if in any way, if in any way, out of exigencies of human nature, I have offended you based on the decision that you've made to make me the leader of your own house as the presiding officer, I would like to put my knees on ground to beg you that please forgive me. And when you are forgiving me, don't forgive me in silence. Forgive me on records so that the clerks can put on records that if there was anything wrong between me and you, you have forgiven me. You Mr. are Speaker, forgiven all your sins. Alhamdulillah. Mr. Speaker, and the concept of forgiveness, 
I cannot finish the concept of forgiveness, Mr. Speaker, except I now say, not just on a lighter mood, on a very serious mood, because I hear one of the members here, a very great member, a very powerful member and a powerful chairman of a standing committee. Mr. Speaker, I would like to refer to the House that as leader of this House, I have been in charge of the activities, businesses of all standing committees, and they were all expected to always report to the office of the House leader. And on this note, Mr. Speaker, I want to say that I have forgiven all chairmen of the C committees, C committees, C committees. I have also forgiven all chairmen of B categorized committees. But for members who hold A committees, we need to finish the unfinished businesses that they have kept left. So I would like to call on Honorable Gardi, Honorable Gardi, probably Honorable Palake, Honorable Betara, members that chaired A committees, that as presiding principal officer over the business of standing committees, they should report to my house today before 7 p.m. to tidy up. To tidy up. Perhaps, perhaps when we tidy up and they're able to report progress, then I should be able to say, okay, what about the, the what about the chairman me? ethics and privilege? Mr. What about chairman ethics and privilege? Should no, he report? No, ethics and privilege. He should he report? No, he should not report. He's, He's on his own. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, on a final note, Mr. Speaker, on a final note, I want to once again congratulate you on your new app appointment to serve this nation in that exalted capacity. Honorable members, for those who are coming, for those who are coming to the Tenth Assembly, like my humble self, while I congratulate you, I also would like to urge them that in the spirit of the humility of our leader, that in the spirit of the very good leadership he has exhibited as the leader and presiding officer of this great assembly, that let us look at the concept of reasoning. Let us look humbly. Let us also respect this gentleman, whom we have all adjudged today as a very good speaker, and to come together on the day of the election of our new set of presiding officers and other principal officers, if, uh, presiding, two presiding officers, to please, please, I will repeat my word, to please, to please salvage, salvage the formula he has presented to us so that his good leadership as speaker would continue. I am doing this because I was part of the members who, first of all, started contesting for the speakership position. Mr. Speaker, I am by all standards qualified to be the speaker. But I want to believe that speakership is always an act of God, is given by God and by the will of the members of the House of Representatives. We cannot be, we cannot have two speakers at the same time. They can always have one speaker. And by God's will, the speaker you have suggested, the speaker you have recommended, the speaker the National Working Committee has recommended, the speaker which the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has also blessed, I suppose, will be the one that is blessed and also accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is in this light that I want to urge members like me, who are still in the ring contesting, to please see the light of reasoning to also step down in the interest of a seamless transition of leadership from here to the next 10th Assembly. Mr. Speaker, I want to finally say that on this final note, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I thank each and every one of us for the contribution you have given to the service of this institution, especially for the legislative achievements that we have made remarkably. The PIV, the electoral system that we have rejected the electoral law, which is now a subject of attraction by even other countries in the world. These are credits that we can all take home and vouch that this is our collective duty and responsibility. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again for bringing us to this day. And I say in the end, Alhamdulillah, 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 lahul mulk wa lahul hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin kadir. Subhan rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasufoon wa salamun ala al-musaleen. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Thank you, leader. Uh, please be quiet. The, de the deputy speaker, please. Honorable colleagues, please take your seats. Mr. Speaker, respected colleagues, 
My name is Ahmed Idris. I represent was a fair constituency prior to state. The speaker as fellow colleagues, I want to thank, thank God Almighty for this very wonderful moment of our life. First, to appreciate him for allowing us to come into these chambers out of the millions of Nigerians that we have found ourselves to be part of those who God has given his trust on behalf of our people. Mr. Speaker, the special colleagues, I want to appreciate the people of my own constituency and appreciate my parents. Though, as an orphan, I lost my father at the age of two months, Mr. Speaker. Today, by the grace of God, I'm in these chambers and I'm turning by the grace of God for the fifth time. I want to thank God for the blessings of life upon me, upon my family, and I appreciate. Words cannot convey my gratitude to him, and I believe that he gives power to whom he wish, and uh, he chooses leaders from among ourselves. Mr. Speaker, the special colleagues, I want to appreciate my colleagues, my bosses, who are finally worthy to give me that trust of deputy speakership, and I'm served, and I'm serving which is coming to an end for the past four years, or about four years now, sir. I want to thank you, my bosses, for the confidence. I want to thank you for the cooperation. I want to thank you for the collective bargain we have done here on the floor in terms of what we should do to push the country forward. I want to thank your efforts. Colleagues, words cannot express my gratitude to you when you chose me to be here and to represent you and to serve in the capacity of deputy speaker. Colleagues, I want to say it's only God that will reward you abundantly, and I pray that he will reward you abundantly. Of course, I want to appreciate my political leaders, among who I would say is Solomon Lara, who, when I was contesting in 2007, I went to him, and he prophesied the number of times I will come to this assembly. And I will tell this crowd and to the world that he said, I will come to this assembly in the number of times and prophesied even the, the number of leadership I will attain and the deputy speakership, and he prophesied, next when I return, I will be speaker. And I will believe, inshallah, I will be speaker of the Black Chambers. Mr. Speaker, respected colleagues, I want to appreciate God Almighty, like I did mention. Mr. Speaker, respected colleagues, we have done a lot, we have worked together, we have come together. But we could have achieved those things we have achieved without the support of the leadership and members of the management of this parliament and the staff. And I want to appreciate all of you. You have been here for us from morning to evening. Each time we are here, I am the last to close because I'm the chairman of the committee of the whole. I know the effort the people have put and you are putting to make us achieve those things we have achieved. We want to appreciate you. We want to thank you. Words cannot express you. You are the greatest part of the greater Nigeria. And we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. May God bless you. May God make things easier for you as you prosper in life. That's very colleagues. I also want to appreciate the members of the press who have anchored and amplified all our efforts and work, who have made it possible for the other world and part of, part of the world to appreciate our work. And I want to appreciate the, the members of the civil society who have been there criticizing our own work. Colleagues, I want to again appreciate you and to apologize to those who possibly in the course of my own duty. I know I'm human and we're all women. Those who have offended, I want to appeal to them to please forgive me because I know my own kinds of style of leadership. I always believe in applying the rules. Not many people will be happy in terms of applying the rules. Many people may not be happy or some people may not be happy and it's not easy. As, management, as managers and managing, uh, and as we are managing ourselves, I want to beg for that forgiveness. I didn't do that because I want to be little, but to make things equal and to apply say, one rule for every person, devoid of our religious divide, devoid of our own uh, ethnicity or whatever cultural divide we have. I want to appreciate that you have made me proud. You have made Nigerians to believe on somebody like me, to believe that there are some small person coming from a very small community called Bashar, who was local government that today you have given me your latitude and the opportunity to showcase the little talent God has given me. Thank you very much, and I want to appreciate. Colleagues, while here, I want to believe that if you have been to my village before 2007 and my community, 
you will appreciate that it's only in this kind of structure that some of us will have a voice. And that is why we have a voice today that I'm proud to say we have transformed a number of communities across the country. Through the instrumentation of this, uh, uh, of, of this house colleagues, we have done two bills or three that I'm proud that I sponsored. You gave me the cooperation. We have the National Orthopedic Hospital today in Jos. We have the National Orthopedic Hospital in Jalingo, and we have the National Orthopedic Hospital in Edo State. These are very, very critical efforts that have been done to change the narration of what is happening in the healthcare uh, system. We have done this, and I want to believe that God Almighty would want all of us as we have achieved those things. We have done so much things that I want to believe if we are to count on those things that we have touched in the life of Nigerians, uh, time will not permit us. I do, I'm not part of those who have a very lengthy period to speak. I am a man of few words, and I believe my few words make sense. Mr. Speaker, I want to appreciate the cooperation, the determination, the cooperation you have given me to work with you as a Deputy Speaker, and may God is infinite mercy to you and reward all of us. Uh, I want to appreciate you, and I want to congratulate you for the position you have gotten. May God make it easy for you, and make it easy for all of us. May he allow you to succeed as you go and traverse. And to my colleagues, that I will be missing the next chamber. I will be missing the like of our uh, Honorable Osai Osai, who would like to bring in confusion in terms of <laughs> using inter intellectual sagacity of legislative business to try to interpret and bring you a rule that does not exist. You have to walk and walk and think very well before you can get out of it. And you will make you believe what is, re what is reading is the corrective. Thank you for, <laughs> for, for helping us to do well. I want to say I will miss the like of Obanta, who will come to the floor always, and is always very consistent on the floor, and defend the things that he thought is right, even though there may be some other interests behind. Thank you very much. <laughs> Colleagues, I want to appreciate all of us. To those who have been very consistent in the committee of the whole, I want to thank you and appreciate you. Without your support, those bills that were now counting as our successes and the post we could have achieved. I want to thank you. May God give us the strength to continue to do the things, to do, do the things that will uh, continue to promote the unity, happiness, and prosperity of Nigeria. May Allah is even mercy help us. Uh, my brothers who are not coming, we have come a long way. God has a reason for bring us, bringing us together. And I believe the more we come together, the better for us. We should not forget that. We are friends, we are family members, we are brothers and sisters. And by the grace of God, God will not allow us to go uh, uh, here away. He will always provide for us. And we read assured, some of us are here, that we are here, we are here on your behalf. You can always count on us on your cooperation. Whatever is your interest, we shall protect. May God help us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I want to appreciate your time. And by my leaders are our mentors who have helped to stabilize the system before our coming. Thank you very much, Madam Ete. Thank you very much, my brother. And to Galina Abba, who is always with us here, uh, who has brought the institution of National Assembly to independence. We want to thank him. We want to appreciate him. Thank you very much. May God help us, sir. <laughs>
May their souls continue to rest in peace. colleagues the day is far spent but we cannot but hear from our presiding officers uh, past presiding officers that are here um, on that note can I invite I believe it's is honorable I think speaker Naba had to leave uh, speaker Ete please she will be speaking on behalf of the presiding past presiding officers Speaker Patricia Ete. The right honorable speaker. Mr. Femi Bajabia Mila, the Deputy Speaker of the House, the House Leader, Minority Leader, Principal Officers of the House, my dear colleagues, the former clerks and the current ones, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and our brothers, the media charts. Good afternoon. I have the singular honor to address you this afternoon on behalf of my other colleagues that are here and those that are not here to share with your joy for bringing this night assembly to the end. I want to wish you the very best. You have really contributed your own quota to the progress of this honorable house and to Nigeria at large. But let me say some few points. First and foremost, I've always been praying that God should give us a president of this nation, someone that has passed through the legislative arm of government. Who says God is not answering prayers? God answered my prayers and the prayers of others for giving us somebody who has really passed through this National Assembly. Not only one, I asked for one, and God gave us three. God gave us three because he knows we've been yearning for it. We want somebody that really appreciates Nigerians. There's no one that will pass through National Assembly or any legislative, legislative harm of government that will not appreciate Nigerians because we are the people that listen to the yearnings of this nation. Give me one trillion naira, I will still prefer to come to the legislative harm anytime, anytime. <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters, what else do we need? Having got these people at the helm of affairs of this country, we need to support them. We need to ensure that at the time they are one of us and we must work together without lowering your prestige and position, but you must work with them. God didn't stop at that point. He gave your speaker, the chief of staff, which means God didn't stop at the uh, Senate. He still brought that gift to us in the House and gave, us, gave our speaker that exotic position. And I know that on getting to that place, he will represent you and represent you well. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, may I tell you today my own interpretation of your going to the executive wing of the government, it is not by your power, 
but it is simply because God sees your heart. You are a loyal person. I want to say it's through your loyalty and the way you have accepted Nigerians during your tenure as the speaker. You know when you are dealing with the poor mercy, God has a way of paying people back. Those are the caliber of people you cannot close your door to. I appreciate you for your open door policy, for taking Nigeria the way they are, and you are ever listening to their yearnings. And today, God has answered your prayer. I remember when you first lost your election. It is only emotional for somebody to feel bad. But God is telling you that he is never late. God will come at the appropriate time and pay you your dues. God pay you by your kindness to the poor messes. He paid you because of your loyalty. So when you get there, continue to be yourself and continue to remember Nigeria and put them first before any other thing. And I wish you the very best in your new office. My dear colleagues, it is only simple when, so, when election is taken, some people are bound to win, some people are bound to drop. I don't want to use the word lose. Those of you that won the election, either to the Senate, remember that House of Reps is the House of the Representatives, Representatives of Nigeria. And when you go there, please still behave the way you are behaving here. Continue to keep the flag flying. For those of you that are coming back, I pray that God Almighty will continue to uphold you and you must always represent the House of Rapes very well. For those of us that we didn't make it back, may I advise you that this is not the end of the world. I had one of our brothers when he said they don't know what Nigeria, what tomorrow holds. I can only tell you that you shouldn't lose hope. The God of today, yesterday, is God of today and is the God of tomorrow. And I want to pray for you that as you are going into the world, your tomorrow will be better than today in Jesus' name. Mr. Speaker, and the people that are coming for the tent uh, assembly, I want to give you a little assignment, which I believe maybe during my tenure I will have been able to achieve. We shouldn't forget that we are practicing presidential system of government, where your major job is the budget of the nation. You must do everything humanly possible to make sure that you achieve that and you take it and you work on it. It is the only work of the House of Reps, not the Senate. Senate have their own. We have our own. And therefore, stamp your authority and make sure you do what is needful. It's never too late. Anytime you start something, please ensure you see it to the end. Ensure you fight for your rights. Nobody can fight for you. It's only you that can fight for, your, for you, your, for yourself. So ensure that you do that. Then secondly, I'm still looking for when the opportunity that I will see a female sitting on the chair of Mr. Mr. Speaker. I have some capable aunts here. Please, if they are applying for this seat, support them. Uh, you are not clapping for me. Clap for me. I want them. Yes. You see, I know that they will do well, but I know that God will be with all of you. The simple logic about these houses, we must work together. Forget about the fact that you are from 
a constituency or you're, you are from a state. Once you are here, you have become a national body and you must act like that. You must work together as a team. You must ensure that what, is, what belongs to A gets to A. That is the only way you can become one person. Not only that, the issue of first among equal is very important. Yes, uh, right honorable speaker is your speaker. We were once your speaker and we were, we were just first among equal. Cooperate with the incoming speaker to ensure that at least you, know, you, act, uh, you know, achieve your goal. If you cannot start on, on a good and peaceful note, it's a little bit difficult for you to achieve anything. Why you are so happy today and you are thanking God and everyone is thanking God for you is simply because you have a very good leader who believes in unity, who believes in a teamwork, and he did that throughout his tenure. I really congratulate you and I want to welcome the new ones that are coming too, that you should do the same. You that you have been here, I am aware we have some that, are even, that have even stayed here up to 24 years. So it's not a, about the responsibility of the speaker alone. It's the responsibility of all of you that have been here to put the newcomers you know, through all the uh, workings of the parliament, but don't take advantage of them. Do not take advantage of them. You should realize that when they are coming like that, they are usually in numbers than some of us that are returning. Therefore, just take it upon yourself to make sure that you train them. Train them fast so that they can get to the destination. And also ensure that you must ensure that the working of the National Assembly is very, very important. And you must do it diligently with integrity in such a way that you'll be able to raise your head and say that I belong to the number of people they counted as representatives of the National Assembly. With these few remarks, I want to appeal to each, one, each and every one of you that you remember those ones that are leaving. Don't leave them behind. They have no other ministry than National Assembly. Make sure you remember them when you come back, how you are going to accommodate them and ensure that they are well taken care, of, taken care of and you fix them well. That is the only way you will not be losing people fast. I remember, you know, when we finished, some of our colleagues were even coming and be begging for one thing or the other. It is not too good. We must be our brother's keepers. We must work together. We must accommodate them. And please ensure you do your job, the legislative, legislative job, diligently. I wish you the very best. And I know that God in his infinite mercy will take care of your needs. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you, Speaker Patricia Ete. And with those words, um, we'll go to what we have left here is the closing prayers, the photo session, refreshment, and departure. I believe... Um, hmm? oh, oh, okay, we have the... Present, uh, we are presenting certificates to the leaders and then the rest of our members will collect their certificates from the, from the office of the clerk. Oh, they've collected already. So, for the leaders, right? give this out or do I just present it? Yeah, for the leadership. Yes, I think you just give it out. Just give it out. Distribute it to the leaders. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. 
Mr. Yes, speaker, sir. you should do it specially, please. All right, so we we'll start with um, the Deputy Speaker, Honorable Idris Ahmed Wasi. Garba Al Hassan Ado. The Chief Whip of the House, Mongonota here. Thank you. Let me say this is the first time that this is being done in the history of the National Assembly. This is a novel um, uh, thing that is being done. The Deputy Leader, Honorable Akpatasin, Akoko Edo Federal Constituency, Akoko Edo Federal Constituency, well done. Honorable Ikiruka, Isukwato, Federal Constituency. Aniocha, Honorable Elumelu, Oshimili Federal Constituency, Delta State. And after a long day of speeches, goodwill messages, and uh, presentation of documents of passage of time, and what appears to be ongoing now, in a very long plenary, really a closing valedictory session. We come to the end of this live coverage of the House of Representatives valedictory session, marking the end of the Ninth Legislative Assembly. We now return to our regular programming for the day. Stay with Channels Television.